What's going on? What's up? Look at this. Look. Can you read that? Oh, no, but I knew what it was before I could read it, but I can read it now. Yeah. A, for those people who don't know, that's the uh, I got my... the mug that Mike Van Wick's girlfriend, Kat, got all of us when we met at the cottage uh, this past summer. Very sweet of her to uh, to create, to give us all little memoirs like, yeah, there you go. It looks better on your camera. Yeah. What are you using, your iPhone or your laptop? Laptop. So your laptop camera is better than my $2,000 fucking <laughs> DS, DSLR. I'm on a 2016 MacBook Pro, you know? <laughs> How are you? Good. Good. Just took a little nap, you know? Feel refreshed. I slept like nine hours last. Can I ask you something? I've been sleeping like a baby lately. Do you think it's possible that my body is having withdrawals from not eating garbage? I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Potentially, <laughs> I, I guess maybe. I'm, I I'm, ser I'm, I'm being serious. I'm being half or you serious. Could, I guess you could have withdrawals to sugar, but like it could uh, or some part of the food. But like uh, it's not just like garbage as a, as a generic term, you know? No, no, I know that. I'm I'm only half. I'm half joking. I mean, I like know. so sugar obviously we know you can have withdrawals to sugar yeah but more i'm talking about like my gut biome like i'm a, i'm assuming my body's going to go through this like transformation of over the next three or four weeks where you're gonna shit your pants every day yes <laughs> well maybe i mean you also said to yourself that your digestion is generally better when you're eating shittier food so that's what i'm saying so i feel like my gut bacteria is like what the fuck is going on this is all yeah. new new food to us i mean yeah. i didn't eat it's not like I wasn't eating any bodybuilding food, but I mean, just eliminating all of the junk. Yeah, yeah. I feel like is causing a change. Yeah. And, and I'm like, how long do I have to go through this before I'm like, I feel good again? Because part because part of me is like, I just order a pizza so I can feel good. Yeah, I mean, it, it could just be like less nutrient, not nutrient dense, but calorically dense, you know? Like yeah. if you eat the food that's not as caloric dense, you're not just getting as many calories. So you're, you're feeling the drain, the energy there. But over time, I think you'll feel better. But that's the funny thing. I think I'm getting the same amount of calories. I just spread oh, out are. over. Yeah. Well, I'm eating like four or five, four or five meals a day. Probably sure. four. I'm probably more four on average. Whereas before I was eating like two, I would eat one in the day and then I would have like a shit meal at night. Yeah. So I don't know. This is a, a process, but my new year's resolution is going well. So far I'm, one weekend, no Eat junk, either. no Uber Eats. It's good for well, my you're gonna have like one day a week where you eat, or you're just gonna try and like well, yesterday I had a higher calorie day. So okay. I didn't eat, I didn't order it out. I just got like I just made pasta with meat sauce and uh summer had some cereal and shit, but like we sure. didn't we didn't order any pizza or any garbage like that. So yeah. I figure it's gonna be good for my pocketbook too, because I'm like fucking Uber Eats three or four times a week it's yeah, fucking adds yeah. up so yeah. anyway what's going on with you fuck not much man you know it's, we got some snow here you guys got snow there or no just finally got snow but it's like melting it's it's oh, not no. like we actually got like a good a good bit overnight to the like everything's white outside today so it's first little bit we really had for a while we had some earlier in the year but then it like disappeared and has come back now so yeah yeah no um hey when do you um i know you go to thailand soon when is that february 6th February 6th, you're gone to Thailand for what, a week? Two weeks. Are you stopping? Two weeks. Two weeks. I'm going from the 6th to the 20th. So what's the trip look like? Are you stopping somewhere on the way? Yes, yeah, so we fly from, uh, well, yeah, we fly to Bangkok first, stay right. there for a, a few days. Okay. What, what are you laughing about? Because <laughs> I said Bangkok, what are you fucking for? Come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was gonna make a I was gonna make a tranny joke, but then I just oh, oh yeah. Well everyone's been making the jokes to us if we're gonna go see a ping pong show. Oh, what's the ping pong? Oh, is that where they shoot it out of their box? Yeah. <laughs> we used to when I worked at the strip club, there was a feature that came in that used to do that. Really? So you've seen yeah. it? I've seen it, yeah. I've seen it. And? <laughs> it's and? awesome. It's awesome. What do you mean, and it's fucking it's amazing. Cool. Yeah. It's cool to watch? Yes. Okay. I mean this is this is this is twenty she's years on, ago. She's on the fence. So maybe this this will be what pushes her over. Like, <laughs> so well. Yeah, uh, this is this is twenty fucking years ago now, but whatever. Anyway. Yeah, no, that's still. Um so we'll yeah, go to fly to Bangkok first. We stay there for a bunch of days, four or five days, four days. 
Um, then we fly s south from there to an area called Krabi. Well, Krabi is like a province that's just kind of below. Like if if Thailand kind of comes down like this, and then Phuket yeah. is here, Krabi's like right below it. Yeah. Um, and then we stay at a resort there for seven days, um, and we got a bunch of like cool little like trips and shit there while we're there. We already booked and stuff. Like go to like some hot springs, go to the fucking the cool islands where like the so movies were filmed, do some snorkeling, do all that kind of stuff. The elephants, the elephant sanctuary, you know. Let me ask you this. When you book this kind of trip, mm. obviously, like you kind of already answered it, but is this what you always do? Do you always book? Like when I book a trip, I'm like, we'll figure it no, out when we, when we get there. Never. This is the first time I've ever done this. Okay. So like you're, this is the first time you're like planning the whole fucking thing. Yeah. Because it's like, we're going a little farther and there's like some stuff we know we definitely want to do. Um, yeah. So we're like, fuck, let's, let's just get them booked up. So we don't worry. Like, you know, because sometimes you get there and it's like, fuck, you know, we don't know how busy it's going to be like in the certain villages and stuff at this time of the year. So we're like, we want to make sure we get like the days and times we want to do it. We can just yeah. pick it beforehand. It's a lot of the times they're cheaper to do beforehand too. So we just booked them all, booked four different ones. Um, and then from there, then we fly one, back. One sec. Let's fill James in. James, first of all, you look like you're ready for the stage, but how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Where are we the story? I want to this. We're talking about, so I just want to fill you in on what he's talking about before he yeah, goes yeah. on. Ian's going to Thailand. So he, he leaves and he's going to Bangkok also. Um, going to Bangkok. <laughs> yes. I'm going to watch, I'm, we're, we're talking about ping pong shows. I knew I couldn't, I knew James wouldn't fail me. Okay. So. <laughs> do you know, do you know ping pong shows, James? Where they pop their ping pongs out of their panani. Yeah. <laughs> That's that South Park shit. Love that. Yeah. Have you ever seen it in real life or no? I, he, I saw, so I, me and Melissa are thinking about it. So I, he said, <laughs> watch. So I'm going to try and convince Melissa. That. We I used said, to have, it's awesome. <laughs> when I used to bounce, when I used to work at the strip club, they used to bring in a feature. So like there'd yeah. be like the normal strippers and then they'd bring in like a feature stripper to like, mm -hmm. you know, be the, it's kind of like a guest posing, right? Yeah. The guest <laughs> posing equivalent of the strip club. So they brought one in that was shooting ping pong balls out of her pussy. So I've have seen this. It's a, it's amazing. Ben, <laughs> you came in yeah, at the right, the right time. Right, the right <laughs> time. <laughs> welcome. Yeah. No, we're talking about, uh, okay. Now Ian can start all over. Ian's going, yeah, to, really it, yeah. Ian's going to Thailand uh February 6th. So he's talking about right. his trip. So tell 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 us all like the the schedule. Yeah, so I fly to Bangkok on the 6th. We're there for four, I think it's 5 days total. Um and then we fly south from there to Krabi, an area called Krabi and then we stay there for a week where we like we were talking about fucking little trips and shit and then mm -hmm. i fly back to bangkok stay there for another day uh night and then fly back so it's like i think 12 days of actual there or 13 days and then like a day of travel on each end so that's cool man that's what i love about. thailand thailand's awesome man yeah i've never been melissa and i've never been so this will be exciting for both of us so ben, yeah. you've been? i got i got this done in thailand my oh, oh. Thank you for the idea i got something to do on my trip now i've been did, did you... in uh phuket Ben, did you meet any trainees while you're there? I can't say trainees, yes. transgenders. No, I met, a, <laughs> well, I met lady boys in Thailand. Oh, lady boys. That's right. It's different. It's different. Yeah, I met, I met, I met a few sexy trannies. Did yeah. you Did you have relations with them? No, no, you didn't. Considered it. I didn't have enough drinking me though. <laughs> if you, if I you, ran if, out, I ran out of whiskey. If you had drank enough, would you have considered it more? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, this is yep, Bangkok and then Bangkok, Thailand. Where's where's Krabby? Down. Uh, down, 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 way down. Wait, there, wait. Oh. No, yeah, see there. Up top left right now. Top right up, left. Top left. Do yeah, you see where Phuket is? Oh Phuket. yeah. Just yeah, to yeah. the right. Just to the right. I thought yeah. oh Krabby. Okay. I thought that was fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. We're, we're <laughs> not going to fuck it. We're going to Krabby, yeah. So we're staying in a place, yeah, right there, Krabby. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah. Okay, so this is for <clears throat> this is for um, Melissa's birthday. Yes, this was her, birthday. her gift. That's a fucking big ass gift, man. Two two weeks. It's a nice gift. It's, uh, yeah, that's, that's the point of like the the, the 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 kind of selfish thing about these gifts is I also get to go. So it's like a big. <laughs> yeah. gift, so then I also get to go. You know. It's it's funny actually. Denise's fortieth is in October, and after the Olympia, we're doing a trip to Thailand for her birthday. Yeah. 
Brilliant. Cool. Right to just... Thailand. I'm left out. I feel a bit like out of the loop. Are you worried about this? Is gonna sound really stupid, but are you worried about China invading Thailand? I'm not. Oh, that's th it's not Thailand. It's Taiwan. I'm sorry. I got that totally. I, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you said that because actually on the way back, uh, we were literally having this conversation. I think yesterday with my okay. dad, we were there because on the way back we fly through Taipei, Taiwan. So like oh, on the okay. way there, I fly Toronto to Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi to Bangkok. On the way back, I fly the other way around. Mm. So I fly. So before anybody tears me a new one, I wasn't that far off. Taiwan's right here. Taiwan's yeah. So on the way back, yeah. we we keep flying east. So I actually fly around the entire world on my way on this trip. So then we fly Bangkok to Taiwan, Taiwan back to Toronto. Oh, you're flying this way on the way back. Yeah, to Taipei, to that city right there at the top. Yeah, so yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. That's where yeah, our layover yeah. is on the way back. Amazing. And so it's kind of cool to think that we'll literally fly like in, around the entire earth on the trip, you know? But it's all, obviously you're going all business class or first class because you got to you got to sleep. Yeah, for a trip that long, I was paying the business class, yeah. You have yeah, to, man. Yeah, you have yeah. to. You got to fucking lay down, man. Yeah, that's yeah. just rough. Well, I think if you we, don't. we fly on Etihad on the way there, which is supposed to be pretty nice. Ooh, Etihad um, business is like, yeah. So we fly there on the way there, and then we're on. I uh, can't remember what the one is on the way back, but also a very nice one as well. So Ben, how many? Be how many ben, how many times did you go to Thailand? Once? Yeah, actually, James, it was uh, for Barry Pitt's wedding. Oh, so we went. We went to Bangkok. We did the stag do. We did three days in Bangkok. That was fucking chaos. I bet. And then. And then we flew down to Phuket, and that's where all the family and wives and girlfriends came. But yeah, Bangkok was a laugh. I can imagine. That's, that's where Phuket. we go first, and then again at the end. Most yeah. of the By the way, babe, Fuad has seen a ping pong show. He says they're awesome, so we're going to I, I saw a ping pong show in, in Bangkok. Oh, oh Ben see one too. Yeah, in you got it. It's incredible to watch. Yeah, it's, a, Fuck, it's an experience. <laughs> It's fucking filthy, but it's funny. She seems, her face seems like she's like she's sold on it, you know. She'll go. It's enjoy if you if if you're if you're lubricated enough in terms of liquor, you it's a good time. <laughs> that can wrong, be taken two ways. Wrong, wrong choice of yeah. words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you're fucked up enough, it's a good time. We yeah. went at like four in the morning. We're like, well, if That's I get when you go. do it. Yeah. All right, yeah. Babe, so so I'm gonna be one night and go to a ping pong show. I'm gonna be the only one who hasn't been to. Southeast Asia, then I gotta fucking go, man. I kind of want to go. I, I, oh well, I've, I've only been to Japan. I haven't been China. to. I mean, yeah, Japan. That's considered yeah. Southeast Asia, no? No. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, it's not Southeast, uh, right? It's just. Well, it's just east. east. It's just east. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me let me go back to make sure. So where? Not, so like, it's all the same thing. Southeast Asia. It's so right like, here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's close enough. Yeah, it's east. It's just so east. It's south. South. It's just, <laughs> I think that's called like the Far East. You know? Far East. Far East. Yeah. See, look, yeah. we're giving everyone an, an education in geography here too. Well, is, you, you don't, don't you don't need Paul to get a geography lesson on. Here. Yeah, you're not you're not you're not uh, partial to this, Ben. But usually we do geography lessons with Paul on Bro Chat. Oh, okay. <laughs> because Paul fancies himself a geography <laughs> expert. Geography, <laughs> yeah. weather, and geography. He, he considers himself a world events expert. <laughs> but usually. <laughs> He gets all of them wrong. Like, we'll be like, what's the capital of Taiwan? He fucking has no idea. <laughs> hey, yeah, he, he's usually pretty good, actually. Like, I'll It's say, not bad. It's not bad. He probably bats like 60%, but then every yeah. now and then there'll be like one that we're like definitely expecting him not to get that yeah. he'll really yeah. have like yeah. a piece of And he'll be like, oh, by, by the way, did you know that their major export <laughs> is uh, wool? And you'll be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Paul, re Paul, it's a, Paul reads a lot. It's yeah. it's actually it's it's actually pretty insane. Um, You see my funny little hairs? Like, look at this here. Oh, let's see. Let's take your oh, hat yeah. off. Take your hat yeah. off. Let me see. Let's see the full. Oh, all right. Sorry. I got hat it now, but yeah. I don't know if ben, James and Ben, I don't know if you've been uh, privy to this conversation, but um, Ian said he's not going to cut his hair for one year exactly. The top. The top. top the top. The top only. I would do the same yeah. as far issues. Yeah. 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 See how far you can grow it out. For sure. Yeah. You want to look like Thor by the end of it, you know what I mean? I'm that's, hoping that's it, I'm hoping I, it goes like I'm hoping it goes like Brad Pitt, like Legends of the Fall. Like I think that's how I end up with hair's long curly. Hair. Sorry, go ahead, Ben. I was gonna say that's how I end up with long hair. When I had my motorbike accident, I had that like they shave my to stitch it up, they shave my head. And then I was like, ah fuck it. I'm not shaving it for like a year and I end up with this fucking mane. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But yeah, he's yeah. got that like that blonde, like rusty, not rusty blonde, but that, yeah. What, I'm interested. To, I've, 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 I've never had my hair like more than like this long. Like when I was bodybuilding and I would kind of comb it over, that speaking, was kind of the longest I've ever had it. Speaking of long hair. Oh, yeah. Look, 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 look. He's got like yeah, the, yeah, the Viking that's... shit going on in this. Look video. at this. Yeah, fucking, this man bun. 
That's a long, that, that was long, man. Like if I pulled that over the front, it was like down here. How many plates is this? It's like six, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, the shit. Fucking. At the end of a workout as well. It's not often you see a guy who's six one with his fucking ass touching his heels with six plates on his back. That's not often you see someone with six plates on a free bar, is it? Yeah, no, yeah true, true. Do you know what I mean? Just... No, but I mean, it's even crazier when it's somebody tall. Those you plates, though. I remember seeing you boys right. deadlifting with those plates, and that's rough. Oh, man. Thank you. Oh, because yeah, that... <laughs> oh, yeah. they're, they're not all uniform, right? Yeah. They were literally yeah, doing like seven, eight plate pulls with those, and they're rattling that, all over the place. It's like, oh, my God. That's, uh, and then we had the deadlift bar, which is the, it was more whippy. Yeah. And that's where the freeze uh, resting a wet pig came from. Like Luke, I think Luke put the bar down one day. He was like, fuck that. It's like resting a wet pig. <laughs> it, was, it was just all over the place. It was just like yeah. doing this on you. Yeah. And then when Person- it hits the hexagonal place, just roll on you. So it was the personal okay. preference on pulling. Like this is just a question. Actually, a bodybuilding one. Do you prefer a whippy bar or do you prefer a stiff bar? I prefer, yeah. a, whip- I prefer oh, a whippy. The whippy if bar. Going, if I'm going for maximal weight, then whippy. If I'm going for like yes. like a nice controlled RDL or something like that, I want stiff all day. Well, yeah. I'm I'm as the least strongest in this group, but I I do have a. Powerlifting friend who's pretty uh, high up in the world. <laughs> yeah, friend. I, I have to go with the friend because I have no experience in this. Don't he was, t- and you guys can tell me if this is true. He was telling me the whippy bar is easier. Yeah, I yeah, sure. for a single, okay. for, for a single, yeah, for, not for, for reps. For a single, for a, when yeah. you're doing reps, no. Can you guys explain yeah. it? Can you guys explain it to the people listening so they know what the fuck I'm talking about? Yeah, because if you're gonna lift, so as you brace on that first initial rep, you're gonna pull the bar to here before you actually t- start taking the weights right. off the right. floor, right? Right. right. So right. you're already or halfway up to a rack for essentially before you start right. really feeling the load right You're that, taking, that's a lot of that bar is going to bend that's what he was saying he's like because if you got like seven eight plates on the like the plates are coming off the ground not all at once yeah. yeah 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 so you're getting you're getting maybe like two or three inches off yeah before you're having to take that eight the seven eight because he, he used to tell me he'd be like he'd see somebody pull like whatever fucking seven or eight plates on instagram or something They're like he'd be like it's powerful but he's like I want to see them do it with a like a, a stiff bar. I I would always preference yeah. a stiff bar. Yeah. Always. Yeah. I, but especially because most of the time we're doing four, five, six, seven reps, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so the, the whip catches you I, off after a while. Yeah, unless you're consistently using the deadlift bar that has that whip and you're used to time in that whip. Because mm. as you get to the top, it's gonna start doing this and you come down and unless yeah. you unless you catch it right, and that takes a little bit of feel, but Fuck that! Doing that with seven plates, trying to—I just want to get down and come back up again. Yes, I, I would like—I would like to whip your bars by doing like sets of like five or less. But I would really have to make sure that like I completely kill all that momentum when I hit the ground. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. one, two, three. Yeah. You know? If you're touch, I try touch. I try touch and go with a whip with your arms. Oh, <laughs> so fun. I've had that happen that's... where you get to the top and then you like drop it forward. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I actually strangely found that i got very used to a whippy bar for squat interesting it's strange but because i was getting my timing right just like ben said so as i'm coming down the weight's going and then as it's going like that i'm i'm changing direction with it and i was yeah. just catching it yeah if but you when... time the, if you time the flex on the squat mm. you can get a little pull out of it so mm. let me ask you guys a question about the about the squat when you're if the bar is whipping are you stopping at the top to let it even out, or are you flowing with no, it? No, you kind of flow, so you let it go like that, and then uh, as okay. it, and then you go, oh, let's go down with it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah You, yeah, you yeah. find this like weird rhythm. Yeah, um, but if you cool. catch the whip right at the bottom, so as you come into the hole, if it whips this that. way, it will yeah. take you, you get that first yeah. two inches yeah. for free. Like, yeah, you're, yeah. Come you're literally like literal zero tension of it, like coming up. Yeah. With, it's like jumping at the bottom of an elevator, you know? James, why are you asking? Are you talking about, are you thinking about different bars for your gym? No, I've got a few. I've got a couple of Texas bars, a couple of actual squat bars, which are really stiff. So an actual squat bar, Ben will tell you, it's 25 right. kilograms, which is like, uh, however many 45, pounds. 45 pounds. 55, 55 and it's like, pounds. Oh, 55 pounds, yeah. yeah. It's dense as fuck. Yeah, like, yeah. I actually don't like squatting with those because, again, like I said, I like a bit of flex. You know when yeah. you used to watch Ronnie? Ronnie didn't even use a flex bar. I just did so much weight on it, it was flexing. You know what I mean? It's yeah. one of them. Um, well, all so, yeah, that's what I'd ask. Mm. Yeah, I got in my gym. I've got the standard power Texas power bar, which is a conventional twenty. Was it forty five? Well, twenty kilo yeah, bar. Twenty, isn't it? Yeah. And then, yeah. and then I've got this Texas squat bar, which is about I think it's four inches longer. Yeah, and then it's, it's a bit thicker. And it's, it? Yeah, it's just thicker, so it's it's a little more aggressive. When I was yeah. buying stuff for my gym, I bought one fifty five pound bar. That's a beast. Only because I'm like, if James or Ian ever come here. 
they're going to need it. It wasn't for me. I'm like, and nobody uses it. It sits there. It's collecting dust. It's waiting for, it's waiting <laughs> for James to, since Ian's retired. This is yeah, I'm going to have one more plate. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So Bangkok for two weeks. What the fuck am I going to do? Are you going to be able to do the podcast from Thai, from Thailand? I'd probably do one when I'm there. Sure. That'd be fun. All right. I'll have to fill one. Just, it'll, be, it'll be weird timing because I'm like, I don't know what the time difference is from East Coast. Like, how far ahead am I there? Google that. Yeah, you, yeah, you'll be like in the morning. I must be like 12 yeah. hours ahead. So I'll be Probably doing it the hour. next day afternoon when you'll be doing it at night. Can you bring a lady boy on the podcast and we'll ask him questions? That would be funny. Or her questions? Interview. Should I, I should come on. I should come on live from the ping pong the show. The ping pong show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Monetization yeah. gone out of the window. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be worth it though. Well, we don't have to show it. We'll get it from like a side view. Like if this and is just your, see like, the ping pong shooting. Out, yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> just, this way. Just, just like this. Oh yeah, we'll do that. I'll fucking juke him out. You know. <laughs> we'll play. We'll play beer pong. So he's got his shot of vodka. And every time she gets it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. every time she gets it in, he's gonna. <laughs> um, uh, Ian James uh, Ben said to me that he wants to race you at the Detroit Pro. Okay. No, not him. I just everybody. I'm no, just, don't, don't start. Don't make no. it personal. Don't That's change yourself. Don't... <laughs> Keep the same energy, Ben. You said all right. I'm going hard. I'm going I hard shit hard. myself if, if I stand we next need, to Ian. We need to like get it where we like we'll do it like hardcore and bring like a 60 meter strip of like real Mondo rubber track yeah. and like yeah. there, you know? oh, yeah. we'll just run to the, just run to the parking lot. You'll be fine. No, I don't fancy not. anyone's we're chances. Here for that. We're putting the spikes oh. on everything, you know. Yeah, I got a track up like literally 400 yards from my house. I'm going. I'm going. Yeah, to bro. Are you going to go start training? <laughs> that Rocky every morning. I don't need to train. I'm just going to come out cold. You guys should start. You guys should start submitting your times. Oof. You guys should. You guys should do Pressure. like 40 or fifty yards, whatever it is, sixty yards. I haven't tied myself once yet since I've been running. I, I should have just to see where my progression has been. Yeah, why didn't feel, you? Obviously, I can feel I've obviously improved a lot, but obviously the first few months I wasn't running anything close to all out. You know. Yeah, but it, it would have been like, great. It would have been great. Like, say if I was running sixty meters. We were doing stuff where, like, say, the first 20 meters was at a certain percentage of output. The next 20 meters was at a certain percentage of output. And then, like, so I was doing different zone stuff, but I wasn't ever doing anything all out. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down on the track. I'm going to go down the track. I'm going to run my ass. I'm going to run as hard as I possibly can. I'm going to do it every day. I hope. I'm going to do it every day and and hope something doesn't snap. And then I'll turn (laughs) it. I think it's like losing weight, man. You do the transformation. Time yourself and then time yourself at the end. Yeah, I was too worried at the beginning if I like actually tried to go all out, I'd hurt myself. I'm like, I made it through yeah. 15 years of bodybuilding with zero injuries. Imagine mm-hmm. if I'm like a month into this and I fucking tear a hamstring. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. always yeah. the hamstring. And you know, yeah, and you know that it always happens when it's not bodybuilding. Like yeah. the yeah. amount of friends I've had that play football or something, soccer in your uh, world. And yeah. and then the MCL tears or the ACL or something. Or something. Yeah. But no, I'm feeling yeah. good. Like even now, like I went out for a practice on Thursday and like did pretty decent amount of sprints like over the two hour practice and like the next day i felt completely fine usually like you know it'd be like a couple days where like some of my like feet and ankles or shins are a little sore blah 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 like i woke up the next day it was it was the first day i'd probably sprinted the most i had and the next day i was like i feel almost perfect so like we're getting to that place where i could start to build the volume i did ben and james before you guys got on here i was telling ian my my new year's resolution is sticking my new year's resolution was to no uber eats no junk food when you've managed so far, it's been one week. No fucking garbage. Yeah. No nothing. How long? One week. Forever for the whole year. <laughs> the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're not that's, making the month. I'm getting. I'm coming one. up there. I'll be there on the Friday. I'm gonna make sure. The special special events only. When you're here, it's it's okay. We'll take that. Yeah, I checked my equivalent to Uber Eats yesterday. The nineteenth. Ben gets in. No, Ben gets in. The seventeenth, because we're shooting some content. Uh, eighteen, nineteen. Sure. And then Dunnies gets in on the nineteenth, and then mm-hmm. we're driving. We're driving up on Saturday morning. Are you guys flying in? I'm taking the train, bro. Oh, so for so just for okay. people for people watching who don't know what the fuck we're talking about, or James, if you don't know what I'm talking about, we got uh, UFC. What is it? Two ninety eight or something. Ninety eight. Like yeah. Sean Strickland. Yeah, Sean Strickland's fighting. So that UFC hey, yeah. is in Toronto. We all have tickets to go. So. I spoke to Arnie last night, yesterday. Schwarzenegger? Uh, on Alan, Arnold Allen. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like, what? Really? He is, he is named after, he is named after Arnold Schwarzenegger. But he's, oh, that's right. he's, like, he's opening the main event. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. He's, he's the first fight on the main card. That's and awesome. I said to him, if you get time, we'll catch up. Because him and his dad's going to be there. So he said, yeah. Well, tell people who he is. He's a UFC fighter that Ben was coaching for a year or two. I wait. 
coaching. I don't mode. mean coach. I don't mean fight coaching. I Help mean like you were doing. I did, I did his strength and conditioning back when he was oh, like um, in like UK. Uh, what was it in uh, W? BC, I think it was. Anyway, he was like just turned professional. He wasn't in the UFC yet, but I did his strength and conditioning. He was like 18, 19, and he lived out in Est- oh, in, in uh, near out in the southeast. And you're great, young. I think he's from. But he used to train in Colchester, uh, BKK fighters. So oh. I used to do his so strength you did his strength and conditioning, and then but you kept on doing. You were doing nutrition for him for a bit, weren't you? Uh like just some fight, like loose advice and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. yeah. yeah. How's coaching yeah. going? It's good. Are you it's still good. enjoying? It? Yeah. Are you still enjoying it? Yeah, I got. I think I got some really good, um, sure. like up and coming amateurs that are this Who, year going to any anybody notable? Anybody that's going to get a pro card? Well, Jordan just turned. Uh, just ah, got Jordan. At National. That's right. If, if, you those, see Jordan, he was. Those people who don't know Jordan is uh, Hunter's training partner, or uh-huh. I don't know if he's all time full time training partner, but mm-hmm. you know, is he still training with him all the time, Ben? Um, not the minute. They're kind of just. On doing their own thing. yeah. I mean, no, I think they're in the gym at the same time, and they'll help yeah. each other here and yeah. there. And... His conditioning was fucking wild. Yeah, yeah he was. I mean, he... yeah. Like, yeah. How old has he been? Yeah. Uh early thirties. Early thirties. Yeah. I think he's like 32, 33 maybe now. And this yeah. is his rebound, but like on, honestly, because another ten Where months is... of him, and he he's like. Just so dialed in, and yeah, he actually used to train with Nick Walker back look, in the day. Look at, the, look at this. Yeah, he, well, he used to train at Revive when I was training at Revive. Oh. I used to see, I used to see Jordan there all the time. Yeah. This okay. is a good, this yeah. is a good physique, man. He's pretty balanced. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he just needs a bit more tissue on him, which we've got a year to do. So I got, I mean, you know, he took fourth at his first nationals, and that's that super heavyweight nationals was stacked. Yeah, like when you when you when you look from the front and the back, like there's he's got, nothing, he's got everything there. Yeah, there's nothing nothing really lagging. He just yes. looks like he needs. I mean, he could use a little bit more back if anything. But yeah, yeah, just, it's, his, it's his lats. It's his lats thickness that we we lost in the prep to get that condition. But he nailed. He, he's already the most conditioned guy at nationals. It was. He looks like it. It's, it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the guy's a robot. The guy is like literally a robot. Yeah, he, he yeah. just. He, he eats. What was the uh, what was the show before? The nationals that he did, he did the Texas. Uh, is it Ballard, Texas? Yeah, the week before. Look at that. Was. Yeah, that's what the pictures at the top were. Were Ballard, Texas? There. Uh, yeah, yeah. But he was he was peeled, and uh, you know what was real funny? We end up just having to just feed him all night. Like I, I we even at like midnight. I was like, "Fuck it, we're not enough food. Let's go, let's go eat." So we end up yeah. going getting burgers and fries, and then eating through the night. I put so much carbs in him; he was just getting fuller and harder and drier. That's I love. That's when it's really fun, you know, yeah. when you're with someone like in person. Oh and you're wait, so, them. so it wasn't a situation where you were feeding him and he was burning it off. You were just feeding him; and he was getting better and better and better. Every time, every meal got better. I'm like, do it again. Do it. And I was like, let's just. He was like, because we were, at one point we we're alternating meals, right? You know, you yeah. like a beef yeah. meal or something. Yeah, and yeah. And then yeah. we just we just got into a meal and I said to repeat meal three every two hours and we'll just keep looking and it just kept getting better and better and better. And that's, that's, I, I, that's I, I the, remember this. Sorry, go ahead. But, no, we'll, uh, go ahead. Ian. I remember this year at, at the at the Olympia. It was my first time like being there, not competing or anything and watching Hani kind of do his process with Chris. Like usually I was yeah. like, where last year, the first year I was competing. So I didn't see them do anything mm-hmm. together. Um, and I remember one day, this was a day out or maybe two days out. We're sitting in Chris's Airbnb or hotel or whatever it was. And he, Pawnee, uh, had him eat a meal and then he posed and then he's like, okay, eat another meal. So it's like, now these are 30 minutes between meals. Mm-hmm. And then we sat there for a bit. Chris ate the meal quick. He was hungry, ate the meal. And then he's like, how do you feel? Like your stomach feels good. He's like, okay. He's like, okay, eat again. So like within this, and he did that like malt. So within a span of two yeah. hours, I saw yeah. Chris eat like four meals. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. feels good. Like you digested that well. He's like, okay, eat again. He's like, eat again, yeah. eat again. Yeah. And just in that two hour time, he ate four. And they weren't like little tiny bird meals. They were like, you know, yeah. 100 grams of rice, 150 grams of meat. Like, you know, yeah. but this is them fucking in 30, 40 minutes apart. But this is the, that, that sums up the reason why when people say you don't need a coach. Yeah. I, I feel like that's not accurate because that would be so hard to the reason yourself. Yeah. the reason you yeah. the reason you have a coach i know i've said this before like oh your mind gets all warped and you're on a bunch of drugs blah 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 but also 
most coaches have coached so many people like Ben, you coach so many clients like Hani's coached so many clients. Like you have problem solving skills that the athlete might not have. Cause they've only, they're only used to looking at themselves. Yeah. <laughs> whereas, whereas you're used to seeing so many different genetic makeups, so many different, you've gone through so many different mistakes on your own in coaching or things that have gone wrong when you're working with somebody that you have problem solving skills. That's what makes Hani. It's not only what makes Hani so special, but that's what no, makes Hani so special. It's one of the attributes of great coaches for sure is those right. like those problem solving skills. And it was just cool to see, like, you know, it's like your stomach feels good, like, and you're still a little on the flat side, feed you again, still a little flat, feed you again. And yeah. then like at the end of that two hours, then he posed again, he'd eat like four meals, you start to look kind of different. And then he kept eating, you know. Yeah. You know what though? This is this is goes to say, like, and Ben, sorry, I don't I don't want to talk about you like you're not here, but when I when I saw Hunter, uh, I think Ian, you were with me. Oh okay. no, you weren't you weren't with me the first time. You saw him the second time I went. The first time, the first time I saw Hunter was at the before the Olympia. It was like the Wednesday, I think, Ben, when I saw him. Yeah. I was like, okay, he's there, but he's holding a little water. Like, I don't know, you know, how this is gonna turn out. Next day we took out to Ben does some shit with him. They, a little they, better. Yeah. Next day we see him, me and Ian went to take a look at him. We we're like, oh fuck, this is like a drastic different from the day before. And then you saw him the next day. Then we saw him the next day. Ben had fucked with things a little bit more. It's like and we see him on stage. We're like, whoa, what the fuck? Yeah. We see him on stage and he looks phenomenal. And we're like, yeah. that's why I also yeah. I don't well, I don't trust you, Ben. Because every time Ben's coaching somebody, he's like, oh, I don't know. You do the same thing Hani does. Hon I was uh, literally gonna say yeah, Hani does yeah, the exact yeah. same thing. Yeah. I don't know. He's maybe not there, blah, blah. And then he shows up and he's fucking perfect. And I'm like, what the fuck? So yeah. But yeah, that you did that same problem solving thing with Hunter to get him from, oh. you know, go ahead. Well, we found out that he was, he had a lot of issues. Right? Well, he was dealing with we stomach issues. Shot. Yeah. But that, he, but, but again, that's, that's so the problem solving. Yeah. That's the yeah. key to a good coach is you're like, okay, he's got this issue. How do we work around it to get him on stage? Yeah. yeah we nearly pulled him out three weeks out. I was like, this is not because he wasn't where he needs to be. And it was just every time I fed him, he would just hold a ton of water because of all the, internal issues. stomach gi issues well, and we didn't have time yeah. yeah yeah we didn't have time to like do a kill phase so i just had to adjust yeah that was hard I, that mean, was stressful. I remember like when we were there and you were like saying the foods he was eating and like the stuff he was doing with like you know different stuff to help with his digestion like it was stuff that was like kind of not normal but like it was stuff that you'd figure out to do for him um mm -hmm. you know as a process of elimination to kind of make it so he could, could still go through this and digest things properly and still continue to progress you know yeah that's about bodybuilding i like is that he responsive nature like to it that yeah they like say problem solving you could do it could be something as simple as look, a guy could be taking clen butyrol a, a 50 micrograms a day and then you go mm, you know what let's not do clen for four days yeah, uh, yeah. like or yeah. with your food okay we're gonna we'll do double carbs and no cardio tomorrow but yeah. like, i like that non-linear response can i can i ask you guys this is how i feel about it i don't know if you guys feel the same way i feel like that um problem solving skill only works in bodybuilding terms when you're eating the same thing every day and doing the same thing every day like you have to have it on paper you do have to have your the reason yeah, the, yeah. yeah. the reason, the reason ducks, I'm saying, your ducks have to be in a row right the, well the reason i'm saying is because some people get shredded on like if it fits your macros right like me and yeah. me and me and lane norton had this conversation and even lane admitted to me like when you're at the four weeks out mark to the show you kind of need some consistency yeah. So that you can play with things to get somebody where they need sure. to be. Yeah. You need a baseline to then control variables out in it, you know? Yeah. Because if you're changing things like, you know, I, we had an athlete at hostile that, um, was a couple of years ago now that was getting ready for a show. And he was like, oh, Logan, I didn't want a name, but I don't think Logan cares. Oh. Logan was doing, uh, like kind of like if it fits your macros, he was having some protein powder with like some oatmeal and he was making like just different concoctions every day. I mean, he was having a hard time getting shredded. And I'm like, you don't, you don't know what to add or subtract because every day is different. Yeah. Like you need to have some type of, uh, like you said, a baseline, a consistency yeah. Yeah. where you can go, okay, I pulled out oatmeal or I pulled out the, and the same thing with your drugs. If, if everything's the same, you can go, okay, I pulled out the trend. I pulled out the anadrol, whatever. And then look at what happened to my body. So I think yeah, that's uh, why I mean, it, it comes. Go ahead, go ahead, dude. That's to say, I think that's why journaling your prep, like the old school boys, yeah. writing it down every day, the food you're taking in, the weight, how do you feel? Yeah. You know, did you do cardio? Did you not based on yesterday? You know, and those foods being consistent, like say, have your regular baseline day. And then everything is 
adjusted depending on that yeah. day. So it all right. comes from that stem that works the whole way through, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like I was treat I treat it like for like say yeah, four weeks out, that's when I was turn lucky lagging with Jordan, because that's the most recent example. Yeah. But like, okay, everything from here is baseline. Anything away from that is going to be a blemish on the blank canvas, right? Yeah. Yeah. So whether it's sweeteners, whether it's diet drinks, and look, everyone can argue what they like. If you've been peeled, like Ian peeled. level of condition, and you've been using sauces and diet drinks, cool. Great, that works for you. If you haven't, yeah. Take them yeah. If you yeah. fucking haven't, then pull everything. If you haven't got that kind of condition, pull everything and find out. Because right. until you do, like, for me, my, my brain just works out of curiosity. Say I was fucking Phil Heath and I won four Olympias and I was adding a bit of sauce. So after the fourth one, I'd be like, I wonder how good I'd look if I pulled everything. I just wonder. I'd yeah, have to find but, out. But I got to say, yeah, I, also wonder, I also also wonder if I'd look worse. Yeah. But you don't know it. You don't know until you try. So you try. Yeah, but but if I'm already winning Olympias, like with in dominant fashion, I'm not going to be like, eh, maybe I should take this out. Yeah, you know but I mean? that's like, where my, it, I, I didn't like, say yeah, everyone it's is. A that's personal head thing. Where I am, I the curiosity in me would be like, I can't finish without finding out how far I yeah. can go. But you, I know, you, but, you, but you if know, you're literally, you know, but you don't need to know the limit so you can ride below it. You know, I, and like, I understand you don't know that until you find like, okay. This is the max of like what I can get away with, and this, this, this. Okay, I took too much out. Oh, I'm starting to look worse, but this is where the limit is. You know? Listen, I, I, I get I, you through it because it's yeah. like telling Roddy to take out the masterpiece. Yeah, like I understand. Motherfucker, I ain't taking out the masterpiece or putting veg in. Yeah, I understand <laughs> theoretically what you guys are saying, but I also think to myself, and Ronnie's a good example. You think about oh, the barbecue. Good thing. You think about the barbecue sauce, and you're like, maybe that simple sugar helped him. Like maybe, maybe this, maybe the simple sugar. But we're agreeing with you. We're agreeing right. with you. Yeah, yeah. You, don't, you don't know until you know. You know how many carbs a day yeah. did he get from that? I wonder. You completely concede that <laughs> maybe that was making him better, but you don't know until you eliminate it to know that it rendered a positive or a negative. Yeah. But I, but I also think as a coach, and 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 I agree. I'm, again, I'm agreeing with you guys. Like you don't know until you know. But I also think as a coach, if I had a client who looked incredible and was dominating, and was happy using the barbecue sauce, that sure. somebody's happiness in a prep is Absolutely. as important Look, as a, a lot of other things i have clients that are like skinless at two weeks out and they're like hey uh are we gonna pull sweetener out or diet drinks i'm like you don't need to you're good yeah, no you're, you're good. good yeah 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 but if you i know there's more to come yeah. Yeah, yeah. if i know there's more to come and they haven't nailed it yet i'm like everything comes out oh, everything comes rather than agreed. rather than push more cardio and pull more yeah. calories just pull the luxuries out for two right. fucking weeks you can like fuck off. no no i, I agree with that yeah. a thousand percent i'm saying yeah. but like you said if somebody's already at Ian level shredded or Fuad level shredded. If you, uh, <laughs> then that's <laughs> um, then I I feel like if if yeah I, I won't argue if Ian was like yeah. oh fuck it I could always, I'd be like yeah cool like when yeah, John I'm not gonna argue with that when John was working with me I went to stay at his house and we were making egg whites he had the same, almost the same Spender, diet I, did. I bet no no I was I finished my egg whites and I doused it in ketchup. And he looks uh, over at me. He looks over and he goes, "Is that what you is that what you've been doing?" I go, "Yeah." He goes, "Well, keep doing it." So then, yeah. he, so then he started doing it. He started adding ketchup. To <laughs> so, so it became this like running joke. But well, I've done it each way. I mean, when I was with Patrick, like he would kind of be I'm like, "So straight, yeah." If we're if no, but it was it's interesting because with me it was almost the opposite. Like uh -huh. if I was having some diet pop, or if I was having some sweetener, or if I was having this and I was looking good, he was like, "Don't fuck with it," and we would leave it in right to the show and it right. would extend to everything if i had right. gh in and i look good let's yeah. not fuck with it if i had a certain yeah. drug in or certain cardio he would leave it but also on the contrary when i worked with matt he was also within two weeks out he's like we're getting rid of all the luxuries yeah, you know yeah. like get rid of the sweeteners get rid of this let's just make sure that your digestion is 100 percent. whether it's been helping or hurting let's just get rid of it and then we'll go from there you know well, so, what so approach I, do you prefer I, uh, pure, uh, pure, uh, pure, uh, pure pardon what approach do you prefer? Do you actually feel is better for you? And I know it's very easy to say, oh, it's situational, but like honestly in your mind, what approach would you opt to do if you had to do it all again? It's so hard because I was at such different places in my life at both times. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I, I think where I was with Patrick at the time was, was good for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. And I did like it and I did not like, like stressing about the small stuff and it was yeah. working. Um, but I also like having that, like, that feeling of that very high level of control, Militant. you know, like I'm doing everything perfect. Like there's nothing in here that is like any sort of variable also gives you like kind of a set semblance of peace. So I do like it on both sides. So it's hard to say. I mean, if I had to do one for the rest of my career, I'd probably knowing how I can get conditioned, I probably would have 
just not worried about those kind of things. Um, mm -hmm. But it also, you know, like I said, it depends on the situation. You know? Can I, yeah. can I touch on that for a second? Cause Hani did the same thing to me, like two or two or three weeks out. Yeah. He let me, he let me keep the sweeteners in. Cause I used to put sweetener in my uh, oatmeal, but he's like, let's pull out a lot of the barbecue sauces. I could, I think he let me have Frank's red hot too. Um, I was like, Ian, there's a, there's a certain level of pleasure you get from knowing you, know, you knowing it's not just hardcore, like knowing you can <laughs> control your urges. Yes. Like, you know what? I can do this because I fucking said so. Yes. Yeah. There's uh, like a lot of like pride in that. You, it makes you feel good. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, I have to do stuff like this, but I have to say out loud. Huh. So I have to tell Donny, like, I'm terrible. This is a really random one. I'm terrible. We got back from the UK and my luggage is sat there with my clothes in it. They're clean. They're just, I just, yeah. She was like, can you get, can you do it? Can you do it? And I said, yeah, yeah, and then I had to say I'm gonna do it before tomorrow morning. Yes. Yeah, and then once I've like said it out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it's kind of a weird thing. Like if I'm gonna try, like oh, I'm but not gonna a commitment to it now. You know, right? Yeah, right. but if I do it internally in my head, I can not negotiate. I yeah. can negotiate and ah, it's okay. But if I put it out there and tell Denise, hey, I'm not gonna eat McDonald's or whatever, but Five Guys for a week, then. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. It's I also think yeah. and this is kind of a, a backtrack tangent too, just for people listening. When we're talking about like having all these baselines too for things, this certainly does extend to cardio as well. Because I think you yeah. see a lot of people, they switch their modalities all the time and they switch, say one day they're like a little lazy and they're not biking as hard on the bike or walking as fast on the treadmill. Yeah. It's very hard to manipulate from something that is not consistent like that. Right. So like you're going to do a cardio, especially at the end, like and where things need to be pushed, let's yeah, yeah. say if they do. You need to be like, hey, I'm getting on the stairs. I'm doing 350 cal calories, or I'm right, doing, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm doing 700 calories. Like, because then you can be like, okay, I can subtract and, um, but it's like subtract 10 minutes. But it's like 10 minutes of what? Is that yeah, a consistent yeah. 10 minutes? Yeah. 10 minutes might be 10 minutes of fluff or 10 minutes of intensity. It yeah. can be a big variance, you know. It's yeah. funny. I it's funny. I still have that mentality. I was yeah. on the on the bike the other day. I had it at 90 RPM. Yeah, at, at level six, and I'm like, it's just stay. And I kept watching the RPM. I'm like, once it started to drop a little bit, I'm like, no, got to pedal faster. So I like have to keep it. You know what I mean? It's funny how like those things get ingrained. I mean, I still in your head. Too, even like now when I will get on the stairs, like I yeah. try and make it so that like I did a li a little bit more than the last time. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. I also want to I, I, overload. I also yeah. want to uh, preface this when we're talking about baselines, we're talking about getting shredded for the stage. Yes. Like this is all prefaced by this is like competitive bodybuilding shit this yeah. isn't like I mean, it, it does apply to everything but it applies even more so and it's even more no but what but the like, reason look, if you're just trying to diet to lose weight this will help you but it's not necessary you that's know? what i'm trying to say is because i i'm trying to i'm just trying to emphasize that the level of conditioning you need to get on stage is different than being lean for every day oh, right? Right. yeah it's not yeah. it's not the same thing so 100%. um james since we're talking about diets uh how is arnold going good Look, i'm gonna i'll send you some pictures from today on the whatsapp oh nice we get to share it do we get to share them with everybody do whatever you want. yeah they're all right we just some after training ones it's not bad holy shit yeah, right. we've had a couple of days uh wait where is this are you doing them personally or did you do them in a group i did them personally but i can send them in a group one they're nothing that crazy they're just today i want to see i want to see if we left out what the fuck i'm gonna show everybody just give me a second i gotta get it oh um, you're gonna hold it up it's not the same man. So he's gonna his email yeah because like, I've, I've only made calls with Milos and I kind of go with it's quite cool because Milos lets me make a lot of calls so like two days ago I was like I'm gonna take two days off body needs it I'm gonna put my food up body needs it so I had two days of higher food and resting and then I came back and I was like okay I actually need a bit more food so two days in a row I've had five guys <laughs> so I'm quite happy so with that let me let me ask you that uh before we show the photos mm. I just I want to understand how that works with your coach so you and Milos are talking and you're like, I feel like I need two days off or I yeah. feel like I need more food. Yeah. When you say that to Milos, is he just like, okay. You yeah, because do I send him pictures of where I'm at. He no, looks no. at the pictures of those I can see. It. Yeah, he doesn't. So far, Yeah. he hasn't disagreed with a, a thing I've said. Okay, if he but, does, then I would take it in. But when it comes to the food, if yeah. you say, do you say to him, I need more food or I need five guys? Uh, I say, I, I, sh I think I should have a cheat meal. And it's always, I always keep it consistent. It's five guys. And then he so, goes, and like you yes were saying no. earlier, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, so it's pretty it's, simple. So I have a baseline diet, and then I have a high, and then I have a cheat. So those three options. So the baseline cardio, 30 minutes. If I need to do more or less, I'll say, what James, do you reckon? 
this is gotta this is gonna get tough. This is gonna get it's, tough. It's crazy, you but it's just not listen, why. you if if Ben, if you're coaching me and I called you and I said, I need a day off, uh, and I need five guys, you might be like, Okay, that you know what? He knows his body, he's worn out. But then you call him the next day and you're like, <laughs> I need five guys again. <laughs> It's like, is he there like, fuck you? Like, what are you talking well, it would, about? It would depend though. Like, it's like, if I'm yeah. seeing the pictures and I can agree and I'm seeing like a positive response in the pictures, I'm like, okay, yeah, we can do this one more. If, But he also said James did concede. If he said to Milos and Milos said, I don't agree, James would listen to him, yeah. you know? But I yeah. think what it is as well I, is this situation with Milos is, I said exactly what I want from this relationship in the beginning. Yeah. And luckily he was like, totally. Like, yeah. Because yeah. I do trust Apparently, myself. But I know they'll get to a time where I start not trusting myself. Right. So if I run parallel with Milos and we make decisions, and yeah. I get to a point where I start going cuckoo, yeah. At least then knows everything Milos can say, it. "James, you're going fucking cuckoo now." Yeah. Um, yeah. This is like this is like getting yeah. in a relationship with a girl, and then after six months, you tell her you want to be have an open relationship. Milos <laughs> is starting off and be like, "I want yeah. an open relationship with the bat." Yeah. So if he's done that, then no, it's different. You know? Listen, I understand. I'm just playing devil's advocate. I understand. Sure. We have James, to, I, understand. I don't think this is what everyone should do. No, I, I think it's a, it's interesting to explore for people listening because I don't think very many coach-client relationships work this way, either pro or amateur. I think most no. are either, you know, if you hire a coach, you're usually like the coach is doing the work and yeah, you're not, not doing the work. I also think there is sometimes like both with Matt and with Patrick, like th they would ask my feedback and like they oh, would listen to it. Like be like, hey, do you feel like do you feel you need more food today? Do you think you need a day off training? And what my answer would dictate the answer, you know? Right, of course. I'm but like, that's yes, but... no, I don't. They're like, okay. But there's a difference between feedback and them and you telling them. Yeah. Right? Like, so you could say, oh, you could I, say I, I think I Yeah, I, I do message him first. I don't just do it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I know that I know that. But, but hear me out for a second. I so, five guys. So Ian, in your in your scenario, you would say, I'm feeling run down, or I feel like uh I'm a little flat. And then Matt would go, okay, take the day off, maybe have a cheat meal. Yeah. So you're giving feedback on your body, but the coach is deciding the uh, plan of attack. Respond. Yeah. Or, or it might even be a, a bit of both. It might be like, I, I, they ask how I'm feeling. I say, yeah, I'm feeling a bit run down, a bit flat. And they say, okay, do you think you need a day off? Do you think you need a high day? Or do you think you need both? And then like, I can actually give the feedback of that. It's right, not just right, so, like right. telling me. They'll right. be like, you have to you know, you yourself, have to know what, the athlete. what do you think you need? And if, I say something completely with what they disagree about. Well, then we can have a conversation. But this is but if I say what they are kind of already thinking, then it's like, okay, this is a reaffirmation of yeah. it. But also, but also, like Ben just said, you've been working with Matt for like you had worked with Matt for fucking how many shows? Five, six. Well, seven. I worked with him for more than that when I was younger. I mean, I worked with yeah. him for five years. That's what I'm I, saying. You worked with him yeah. before and then after. Yeah. So like yeah. he knew he knew you so well that if you said like you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like But that's that's it. There there has to be a level of trust and also like, look, do I would I ever do this, or do I think it's an appropriate thing to do with a client that's not nearly at the level James is, or has done as many shows, or has been competing and has the level of awareness of his body and how he feels during training? Like, James knows how he feels when he goes into the gym and slams fucking crazy weights. He can tell if there's a decline in performance or if he's feeling day to day, and he can tell these things and that you know what those are going to render long term in terms of his look. He'll know, yeah. hey, when I was feeling really slugged down at four, five, six weeks out. It generally rendered a worse look on stage versus the X, Y, Z, you know? Uh -huh. So I think there is a bit of pull and push, but it has to be with someone that has that level of awareness. I would never give that freedom to someone that is like a more amateur or even a top level pro that I know isn't someone that is quite as aware and is really just followed orders their whole career because generally they're just going to say what they want and not what they feel they need, you know? Yeah. What, I, what I like about what James said is he... I, sorry, James. I'm, what I like about like what I like about what you said was, you understand there may come a point in your prep where you're like, I can't see clearly. For sure, yeah. John. John had it. He helped yeah. Neil helped him that year. Like he said yeah. the same. John Meadows. He said, Yeah, you know Neil's on on hand. There's going to be a part of this prep where I start going to do lally. Yeah, yeah. He knows exactly what I've been doing up to this point and how. He knows all the the factors. We can play from that, and he has the experience. So, um, it's kind of like what we said on the last podcast with. Ian saying like there's just this this thing about even on this podcast uh, I really am interested and intrigued about knowing myself yeah um, and that intrigue is what ultimately is my main driving force in enjoying bodybuilding so for me to enjoy bodybuilding I have had to accept that there is a certain amount of decision making that's in it that is why I enjoy it 
So I can work along with people, but it has to be with, not under, or... Under. or yeah, it's, it's strange. It's not why I'd suggest you know, for everybody, it's like Ian said, unless you've got a, a, a level of awareness, which if you speak to Jordan Peters, he'll tell you the amount of awareness I have in my body. It's crazy. Like, I, I know I'm very aware, and I, I've often gone against my awareness for the sake of not disrupting... A plan. plan. A, yeah, a plan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I know that now it's... I haven't got many shows left in me, really, so... You know, the, the tricky part with that, though, is not the same body doesn't always respond the same in every prep, right? And that's where, and it's more noticeable once you get to that four week out mark and things are, yeah. Because you're, like Ian said, with Patrick, it's one situation, and with Matt, it's a different, it's two years later or three years later, yeah. you're older, your metabolism is different, Age. you're more stressed, less stressed, whatever. Yeah, like more, muscle, yeah. more muscle, like everything. Yeah. Sure, There's yeah, so yeah. many factors, so yeah. many. So that's why. I just take, I know everything I've done up to this point and, and I honestly make decisions based on what happened over the last three, four days. And I just keep doing that basically. I also James. think that there becomes, I'm oh, sorry to interject. I oh, no, go ahead. Of a career where I think James is at, and I was definitely at at one point where the coach needs to take into account, like James was saying, like what's giving him like enjoyment in bodybuilding. You know, like it's different when you're like trying to make it on the come up and blah, blah, blah. Sometimes you got to sacrifice. But as you get later in your career, like I think you need to do some things that just make you like feel good and like feel yeah. excited about what you're doing. Yeah, you know, and definitely Matt really took that into account like this last year um, when I did Toronto. Like, you know, he really was like, you know, I want you to be enjoying this as much as possible. And I want you to, you know, like look at this from a you know a positive standpoint so like whatever we need to do that we do that you know mm. um where obviously other years there was more less flexibility with that you know Ian, you know what it is for me. like for him you know having a little more control and exploring like what makes him you know tick well as a bodybuilder yeah. um, at that point in his career i think then you should always do what's going to make you mentally feel the best about your prep you know i think a lot of it ian as well is you know we always harp on about being present you know, in life. 100%. And before you know, when you're a bodybuilder, 20 years has passed and you weren't mm -hmm. present because you're just following orders. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just, I'm just tired of not being present. And I take enjoyment of getting the pen and paper and sitting down in silence and writing down you know my thoughts. And and like, yeah. It's just for me. It's just I, for me. Really. I think that's I a, I think that's a personal preference thing. Cause for I, sure, for sure. I took, I took a lot of, um, I took a lot of joy in John being a mentor. Sure. I didn't want to, I'd give him as much feedback as he needed, obviously, yeah. to do his to do his job. Yeah. But I took I think I performed better when I was out sit of the, back in, yeah, yeah, sit back in the, yeah. in the past. I yeah. might, I might, I may never perform again to the level, you yeah. know. Um I certainly enjoyed my time with Patrick in that regard. I thought it was yeah. great. I really enjoyed that kind of sensei. Yeah. At the time it felt exactly what I needed for yeah. sure. Yeah. So yeah. I totally get that. Um, so James, can I ask you, is part of this prep? or not just this prep, but moving forward is part of your, I don't know if I want to say enjoyment or goal or like satisfaction. Do you want to try and go as far as you can on your own? Like if you finish, like could, could your goal be to finish the whole prep without Milos interjecting that much? Um, I want him to feel as involved as he wants to be. It's a hard one to word because Listen, I lean on him in different ways. I, yeah. I lean on him from something that you'll know about Milos is how encouraging he is and how passionate. Yeah. Yeah. I've always said this. Every time I come away from a WhatsApp conversation with Milos, I feel better. Yeah. So he's given me something that's so important to me that's actually more important to me than orders. Yeah. Um, so it's whether different. he has to interject and give me a lot of factual information to steer me right, or he does what he's doing and I land where I want to land. Yeah. yeah for yeah. me... That's priceless, and I would be just as honored to have him as part of my team. So, so I, yeah, it's, it's not normal, I know, for many people to hear that. But... a very important part of being yeah. a good coach, and I think in bodybuilding it's not talked about enough, and I think it's something you see in like other sports, like in football or, or whatever, is coaching athletes very differently and just knowing how to get the most out of people. And like sometimes they need a little more control. They need a little more motivation. Sometimes they need to be like, you fucking suck. Get your ass to the fucking gym, you fat piece of shit. And they yeah. need to be controlled a hundred percent, you know, and no two people are alike mentally like that. And I think, you know, knowing what is going to make someone tick 
is really the best way to like get the most out of them. Like people require different levels of motivation, types of motivation, types of whatever, you know? And I think you can't just use like a one size fits all like mold to coaching, um, especially if you want to get the most out of people, you know, like you won't find like, you know, in the, in the NFL or the NBA like that in private, they're going to talk to all these athletes the same. They're going to know yeah. that these are different individuals that you talk to and approach differently to get the most out of them for sure. Yeah. You know? Ben, I, when I'm you're a, Sorry. Sorry, Ben, when you're working with, I don't know, you, you've had up to like 50 clients at one point. When you're working with all these different physiques, amateur and pro, is is figuring out their personal life and personal drive part of what you're doing? Yeah, I'm huge on the body will follow where the mind is. So you like actually you, so you actually like, focus on that more? Yeah, like take Jordan because we just mentioned him, for example. Like having him, like we had a real hard, horrible conversation about after the 21 Olympia, um, where I said like, no, 22 Olympia. Yeah, 22 Olympia. And I was like, because I pulled him out of a prep and I was like, you're not there, you're not I oh, like, I remember. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, you're not meeting my expectations, etc. So, um, we found a way that gave him his purpose. To, but it, everyone, like Ian said, every individual needs a different, a different path or a different approach. Well, what, um, can I can I ask you what what's two questions? One, how did you figure it out with Jordan? And two, can I ask any specifics like? What was it that made him tick from one prep where he wasn't doing what he's supposed to do to all of a sudden? No, I'm not saying it, it's not necessarily what he, um, he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. It was his expectation of himself and yeah. didn't match where we were at. So we had to have an honest, hard conversation. And I said, listen, you need more time. You're yeah. not where you think you are. But if you trust me, step away. We'll do it properly. And we'll put you where you need to be. But you know, and then... You I know, know for Dan working with. Go ahead, sir. Sorry, Ben. Go, go ahead. Go. No, no. Go ahead, Ben. Sorry. So for Jordan, he needs all the nuts and bolts tightened down hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He needs just fucking tell me what to go, and I will fucking yeah. run through that wall for you. But is that and once we once we establish that relationship, he thrived, and that's what yeah. you're seeing. Like, and that's where his body is going. But not everybody needs, not everybody wants that, and needs that. And some people, like um, Carl, for instance. The uh, British guy that, that yeah, turned yeah, pro this yeah. year. Um, we have I've known him for fifteen years, so we have a different, a much different rapport and relationship. Um, and like when we when he turned pro, that was I don't want to say we were like co coaching, but his input back because I was from he was in Ireland and I'm over in Texas. It was like two, so the feedback that we were going back and forth about his body was imperative on that one. Yeah, yeah, like he was he was blasting full so on that. So you had to like, so you had to know, but you had to know Jordan well enough to be able to have that conversation where you're like, Hey, you're not going to be a pro right now. Um, Wait to a point. I had to challenge him and find out what that response back (laughs) was to figure him out. Like you don't just know. So you don't know anybody until they're backed into a corner and you see their response. That's where you find out the real person. Because everyone's, it's always easy to, to see, get this around. Is, so. See, this is what separates like a full-time coach from like somebody who's doing something else and coaching on the side. Yeah. A full, yeah. full-time coach like Ben, Patrick, Hani, Chris, like these guys, they're looking into your lifestyle. Matt, sorry, Matt's another one. Matt and Patrick, they're both, you know, reasonably different in their ways of they coach and everything. But one thing that they both, knew was me and how to get the most out of me. And if right. you look at like how the conversations happened of like how they would talk to me about things or how they would motivate me, they were almost the exact same because that's knowing me and knowing like, Hey, if I say this kind of stuff or talk to him this way, I usually get a kind of a negative emotional response, which right. kind of leads to something versus if we talk this way, we get a more positive, you know, and we get better going forward. Yeah. Um, so, you know, even though there was a million differences in the terms and uh, the ways in they approached me as a person were almost the exact same, you know? So James, you're, tell me if this is accurate to say right now, the most that you're get. would you say that when you prep, you are harder on yourself than most bodybuilders or you can get down? Yeah, I'm very hard on myself. So I need someone to be in my and be like, you can do well. I'm, so, the exact, I'm the exact same as James. I think a lot of I think a lot of bodybuilders are. I think I was yeah. the same way too. But like some of us are, there's obviously different degrees of it. Yeah. yeah. But so I, I just need I just need somebody... someone to tickle that switch in the morning. Once it's yeah. on, 
It's yeah. on all day. But Just it has reminder. to be the right person, right? It has to be yeah. somebody that Does. you see here. They have to be credible. If they're I've on talked... your level, yeah. it doesn't work. Oh, I've... dude, I get people say it to me all the time who are like... It means nothing. I told like, you that no, dis- Yeah, no disrespect, but unless yeah. you've been where we've been, yeah, I can't take no, that. No, you don't have yeah. No, I've do you told, know what I mean? I've no, told... I, would, uh... I, would, I posed before for buddies, you know, like, be in the gym training with a buddy that's not a high level bodybuilder hasn't been around and i'll get yeah. him to take my book my video after training and he'd be like dude you look fucking crazy yeah. and i know i don't look good for me but you hold know? on it's it, like I'm, I'm like yeah thank you i appreciate that but i know i'm not where i need to be you know but, but yeah. uh, i think it goes further for me and i don't know if you guys feel the same way it can still be somebody i respect but there's still only certain people that will Ooh. trigger you in a certain way so like yeah. So like, I respect all you guys, right? If you tell me I look great, I'm still not going to believe you no, because yeah. I'm like, because I'm like, they're all my I friends. Yeah. They're not going to, they're not going to say anything bad to me. And if they do, it's still not going to be as bad as like, I really need to hear. Whereas, whereas if I'm sitting with John or Hani or anybody I've worked with before, I pick them on purpose because I usually pick people to coach me that I put on a pedestal. Yeah. If I put you on a pedestal, that means whatever you say to me, I'm going to fucking do. Exactly. If I, if I see you as a buddy, I, I just can't, it's just a different feeling. It's not the yeah. same, like, I'm not going to run through a wall for you. Yeah. You know, you know what's funny? I sent, a, I sent a message to a guy that I coached, the Austrian guy. He, he's like he's like a Roman Fritz 2.0, right? Not 2.0, like, on his way to be out. <laughs> and uh, I sent him, like, I was like, man, like, the progress you made is crazy. Da, da, da. And he was like, is this, is this Ben? He's like, you've never said anything nice. Never yeah. said anything. <laughs> like, because it's like, my, in my opinion, as a coach, it's like it's problem solving, right? I'm not here to pat you on the back when you do things right, right and they, they're going right. I'm like, we need to fix this, we need to move forward. And it's like, I didn't realize sometimes, but then if I look at my roster of athletes, they probably look up to me like you're saying, they put you on that pedestal, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when that, when you do, it's so powerful when you do say something or they, you know. And then that that really pushes them on. So, but it's the same yeah. the other way too. If you're patting them on the butt every day, then that me- loses all its meaning. Oh, so, I fucking hate doing that. I mean, I'm yeah, British yeah. anyway, so I'm not like yeah, patting yeah, myself yeah, on the yeah, back yeah. for waking up in the morning. So, James, that's where I was leading with this: is Milos is kind of that person that you trust, and that you, if he says you look like yeah. shit, you believe him. If he says you Absolutely. look great, you I, believe. Yeah, yeah. The biggest thing I, mean, I trust his opinion of physiques. You're right, right, right. He's got one of the. He's seen the most physiques out of anybody. Stood right. next to the most. Right. Like he knows what's good and what's not. Yeah, black and white. Yeah, James. When you pick a coach, do you need? You don't need them. You don't need them to compete, do you? You just need them to have been around. No, but I do think if they have competed, it does help reassure you subconsciously. Yeah, yeah. Even if you want to say it or not, because on the surface, I'd say no, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But I think internally, there's something there that a faith and a trust that is built when you know they've walked the walk. Yeah, I think if you know they've suffered, then it's different. It's like if you try and put somebody through a workout, yeah. and you you've never done the workout yourself, you're just like telling them what to do. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of bullshit. It's like yeah, there's always going to be a little bit of second guessing from me. Be like, yeah. mm, really? Yeah. Like when it got like, have you been two weeks out and starving? Mm, I yeah, don't I don't need I don't need the guy to be a pro or be high level, but I just if even if they've done one done show, yeah, yeah, just to know what it no, feels no. like to be like no. hungry. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's take a look at this, uh, these pictures. It's just because you're my boys, so. Yeah. Like a fucking freaky for fucking eight weeks out, brother. Is you it eight so out? much rounder than you've ever been. Yeah. Um, uh, and you, people say insulin. I I don't even use insulin in a minute. Those apples. I, mean, also, I, mean, also, I don't even bother with insulin because I don't need it. Do you mind, do you mind if I critique? Yeah, yeah I'm narrow. No. <laughs> That's not what I was going to say. Yeah, go I was just picking between poses. Like when you do your most muscular, this is the one you should do. Yeah. People, yeah. everyone says that one's Well, bad. because this is this. Wider. It shows up yeah. how narrow your clavicles are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this this makes, you, makes you look yeah. twice as wide, right? Yeah. That's I, what I, I'll be doing on stage. That's yeah. a mean look, man. That's yeah. awesome. It's crazy how fucking small your stomach looks with the fucking. I was gonna say, your, your ab development looks a lot better than I've seen. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Obviously. It's not bad. I do train abs literally every uh, upper body session. I but like. I also find, James, and just observing your physique over the years, when you're flat, your abs really oh, just wait, wash wait, out. Wait. They do, they do. So, so if bad. you looked at me, so you looked at, yeah, wait, if you looked at me the last two days before I'd be five guys, my abs were non-existent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's one of the areas for me, it's weird, isn't it? Like, 
flat. There's no abs. Can I can I ask you guys? I think I have those parts though. Like when we're flat, are like the telltales. Mine was my abs and my chest, and like if I, if they're going, and when I get really really flat, like so flat that we've made a mistake, then my arms will start to go. But that's like only at like where I'm like crazy flat. That's that's when you know it's critical. You're like oh fuck. Yeah. Can I ask you guys? I'm sure I've asked you this before on the podcast, but my stomach used to actually tighten up if I was full. Oh, yeah, sure. mine does. Same. Yeah, like it, my obliques would come out. Kind of. Uh, yeah. When I'm flat, my obliques. My, when I'm flat, yeah. my obliques hang and get soft. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. the first day I had my uh, five guys, I woke up in the morning. I said, "I'm like Yannicka. My fucking stomach feels like rock solid and small. <laughs> it's like tight. Yeah, like, yeah. and yeah. I can't it's explain my the cock. size. Kind of my Rock's always solid forward. Mal- Rock's um, small. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude, when I'm flat, I look like I've got a saggy belly. It's shit. Right. Yeah. Okay, I'm not the only one. Okay. No. I was like, what the fuck, man? What is this? It's at the end of it. I, I suppose it's a muscle, and if a muscle hasn't got, like, fullness and glycogen. I know, but because I always had a wider waist, so I would try and limit the amount of food as I was carb loading. Yeah. yeah, but then you realize. So, but then I would swallowed. come in. I would come in a little flat, and my fucking stomach Ratios. would be like, "Yeah, it was a it was a tick." I had almost my entire bodybuilding career of feeling how flat or full I was. I would literally just like reach down to my like stomach and like feel yeah. how my feels. I like pinch it yeah. and be like, "Okay, how much can I pinch? How tight does my stomach feel?" And that yeah. is literally how I could gauge how flat or full I was. You know? I always my ass. I always pinch my chest. Like, yeah, I would like grab ass. my chest. You know, like you can tell. Yeah, I'm not this the right. Yeah, that's bum. Always the bum. No, <laughs> nah, man, the ass is still fat. Because my area that is hardest to get lean is the outer glute in the side shot. Yeah. No, so okay. The soap that's dish. I, know. I call that the soap yeah. dish. Yeah. My leg, my quad comes in quick on the side, but my, my ass up top, not so much. I, I want to never... say, have you any side shots, by the way? Because James's side leg. Oh, no, no. I actually want to talk. I'm glad you touched on that. I wanted to talk about this. James, I want to make one more critique. Yeah, yeah. Don't hate me. No, please. Yeah. I'm just. Go for it. I'm just a very um, opinionated person. At the end of the day, we're all bodybuilders here. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to help. Okay, so I noticed you doing this lately. Uh, this side, this side tricep. Yeah, I love the legs together more. Gotcha. How do you how, how do you feel? Legs like together. It. You like this one more? No, no, I like the traditional one more. I do, but you know what? At the minute, the reason my waistline it... isn't tight enough for it to look good. No, no, the only reason I say, yeah, I mean, if you're doing it just for progress picks, that's one thing. The only reason I say that is the quad looks more dominant than ham. Way more dominant than the ham in this in this shot. Whereas when you when you do it like together, they're more even. Yeah. I don't think I've got a shot of it because honestly, you know when you're first diet, look on look at there. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't sit like that for some reason this side tries to put a minute. I found it hard outside trying to. Yeah. I'd... Like see, like see that, see how they look proportionate here. Yeah, don't wrong. Kind of... Once my stomach's in, I think I probably start doing that one. I just honestly, like, say it's just some morning shots. There's there one there. Yeah, you... yeah, your yeah. legs when they're together are that nasty. Yeah, that's the. That's you know, what... I was looking at Dorian's side tricep, and like, I, I don't know many people with a good ham in that way. Different. Like, different Dean's was really good in that. No, well, Hunter's got a good one in that shot, but still, yeah. even though Hunter's is good, and Ian's was good in that shot. Yeah. It still would be thicker when if you have together. the leg. Yeah, I was, I was doing it more because in like in my side chest, I'm already doing it. So on the side try, I want to stand on it and show off that like detail in my side leg. And I found it made my shape from like top mm. to bottom kind of look a little nicer in my side try. So Your like, I, really okay, good. I'll lose a little hamstring, but they're already seeing it in the side chest, which comes before the side try. Yeah, I want to show something uh, different. And but show the thing, but the thing, yeah. but the but the difference is also, and forgive me, Ian, for saying this, uh, James's sweep. From the side of the quad is like massive Man. so it actually takes away from the hamstring because he's got so much quad so i'm like that's why i think when they're together that hamstring yeah. drops down and makes it look more proportionate I actually makes sinful i might get sinful for my hamstring i like i remember talking to i remember talking to hunter about his side try because and who I was always on me of trying to get him to do the traditional yeah. i prefer the traditional on him but I get where Ian's arguing is like you show a slightly different look. It's not that much worse, but if you're just gonna only show one, I would I always preference the traditional. Yeah, yeah this, I normally this, do the traditional first because um that's normally when they've made their decision. It is normally better on me. Um that might be just my my own personal bias because even when Hunter used to do it all the time, like Hunter, please, I'm like Ben, please tell him to stop doing that. Because his leg look, because his hamstring would just fucking drop like it yeah. was crazy and i'm like but also look check this out uh so here's dorian yates 
This is exactly what I'm talking about. I love Dorian's one. But this is exactly what I'm talking about. See, his quad's not overly sweet. Yeah, he doesn't have the craziest quads. So they still look like they're balanced. Do you like that shot top left, Fu? I did one in the six-week out one. That one is the one I fucking love. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. But again, but, yeah. Again, I don't know. I'm just a sucker for some white Caucasian meat. <laughs> so I thought, what can I say? It's just I see that and I'm like, that's bodybuilding for you know, me. You know what's funny, James? When I, <laughs> when I saw you do that pose, I'm like, he's doing yeah. Dorian Yates. I'm like, for you know, sure. I was on, but... you know, I was on, you know, I was on Google Images that morning. Like. <laughs> but also, uh, also again, not to shit on James, Dorian's upper thickness in that shot matches Great. his lower. Whereas I feel like when you do it, your lower body is much thicker and denser than your upper. Yeah, yeah. not much, but compared to the traditional, where you it has a bit more balance, top to bottom, a bit more. Yeah. There's a little bit more to this shot too, if you look at it. He's he's got this. He's standing in a certain way that's just spot on. James, it's... see what he's see what he's doing here. So he's got this like out, yeah. but you can see the back leg. So it almost yeah. creates an illusion of more mass. Yeah. yeah see, I, when I did it, I would just sandwich like how the legs are like that, and I would sandwich my hamstring as hard as I could against mm. that back. So Wait, go what, back what, to go back to James's one because I am look. So I I just if you could see the no, back leg a little more. Hang on, hang on, James. If you look at Dorian's. His upper body, he's rotated a little bit more around. Yeah. Like, it makes him wider across the top, across okay. his shoulders. Which that's I think the only thing I would change with that shot is just rotate your more shoulders. twist. I don't yeah. think so. I but, think, and then I don't think so, guys. I think. <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> James. We need I always, I, I always got to be the contrary. You know that. No, it's good. It's I good. also think if this leg comes back a bit more, this yeah. is more of a straight line here. I, agree I do want to looking at this. I do want to grab my body like Ben said and just go. Argh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, just you pull, you got that back shoulder around. Yeah, because yeah, he's pulling this shoulder around also to get the chest to thicken yeah. up. Yeah. And that would correct why I said that illusion of like your upper body is not yeah, as this cross. Thick. So look at your look at your legs there. Look how the width for him. And then look at like from your the back peck to the, the rear delt. Yeah, you're right, Ben. You're, you're right, Ben. It's too like yeah, it needs more yeah. distance. Yeah. But it's there yeah. if you just if you yeah. just yeah. does yeah. that yeah. with it. Yeah. And then you've got Dorian. Ian's had the best side tricep, I think, in the game for a long time. I just mm. got the like positioning of it right. Like I didn't have necessarily all the best parts for it, but I just like figured out how to like hit it well. And I was very good at like cinching in my midsection on side yeah. shots like, on quarter turns or side shots. I, I, I think Ian, kind of, like, cool. I think Ian's um look at that. Look at that. Ian, Ian's waist yeah. and and this separation here is what made it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a shot. But you see, that's, that that's, that's an older, that that's lap. an older shot, isn't it? But, but even that lap coming into kind of you. Yeah, but James, do you see what the same thing Ben's talking yeah, about? Like this get that left shoulder forward. Well, this shoulder is coming way. around, so it's creating yeah. the thickness in the chest, and then this shoulder's coming back. You look at yeah, my yeah. Shot. my bare, my right, bare ass is on Google there too. That's look at the one where it says warning shot. That's where he got big and then couldn't get round quite as much. Which oh, this one, yeah. He got got too small. Compared to, yeah, look now, now he got jacked. But like look at the stuff. waist. Yeah, that's crazy. He looks crazy. like a Hellboy there. Why did this Rich. guy retire? He was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like that. Uh, one. You know, fitness vault, that most muscular of Ian, up on the top right. Which? Oh one? yeah, that was Spain. That's yeah, ridiculous. This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah. crazy. Yeah, that Spain lighting was so fucking it's really awesome. good. Uh, so much muscle there. What other side triceps do we like? Um, uh, Rubio. Oh yeah, Rubio's is sick. Yeah. Yeah, but he does Rubio. tradition. Oh, he hey, does. It's still fucking he, mad. Like he does no, tradition. No. He does. Look no, at no, that no. side tricep next to Crizo. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fucking absurd. <laughs> Look at his quad, like cuts. And his fucking like, tricep. It's like a balloon off the back of his arm. Yeah, it's absurd. I would go to say that I don't really like Phil Heath's because I think his arm's too big. I don't uh, love Phil Heath's side tricep. I love Nick, his side tricep. Nick. Nick Walker's side tricep is pretty nice. Nick's got superior side tricep to Phil. One second, opinion. one second, one second. Ooh. I just feel like the arm's too big. Yeah. Oh, that side chest though. It just, it's not bad. It's just that I think he, it looks almost like he's bound up. Like he needs to pull yeah, this back a bit. It doesn't flow quite as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's not bad. Ian, Ian has Phil on the side tricep. It's not so bad. He's only seven time <laughs> Mr. Olympia. You beat, you beat seven time Mr. Olympia on the side tricep. <laughs> But that's side take a look at Nick. That's enough to take retire. A look to. At, um, take a look at Nick Walker's side tricep. It's, yes. Yeah. He does have a decent one. He doesn't look boxy at all in the sides. Does he? He looks really. He's like, got a good side leg and he's got 30 inch arms. So it. No, they're old. Ones. This is an, this is a, like that's, a, that's an old school one. Yeah, that's right. Look, one. How much he's, look how much he improves in the same. That's crazy. Uh, where the fuck? You probably have to go to his Instagram to get a recent one of him, to be honest. 
That's not that Jesus. That's that, that's a little that's a little more recent. No, that's still pretty old. Yeah, dead. side chest. Sorry. No, it's his Instagram. He always puts look at side this. chest is very good as well. Look, look, at, look at this. That's a lot of muscle. <laughs> that was before the Olympia. That was a crazy shot. Yeah, yeah, that's retarded. Okay, uh, I don't know. Retarded. Let's see. Anybody see anything? There's this one no, over here. I guess you have to go to. Oh, yeah, to, to, to yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's more recent. That's a dragon slayer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's in good shape right now as well. Yeah, um, I think he, I like Ian's. I mean, there's more mass here, but I like Ian's better. Ian's just has an aesthetic to it, yeah, as well as size, which yeah, is great. Let's take a look at Hunter because I know that's one of his favorite poses. That's pretty fucking wild too, though. Yeah, he needs yeah, like, yeah, he's, that's, he's that's that. the Nationals too. That's old. The reason yeah. I think Ian's conditioning is also it makes it look wild. Yeah, because you're crispy. My yeah. side leg and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His like the, to you, the, the, the amount of the amount of detail. Uh, speaking of that, actually, and he's got a lot of detail, and the oblique as well helps. You know what it is? I think the reason Ian's looks better than a lot of them is, I think some of these guys are so big it just looks uncomfortable. Well, like, I think the, like like Hottie doesn't look comfortable in this pose. I think Ian having a little bit more height makes it way more. Better. I also think too. I found like when you have your legs in this traditional style like this, like James said, it's harder to get twisted around. Like I, I found I never. Yeah. Looked you can't pull the waist in like that. Yeah, no, I agree with that for sure. When your legs are like this, you yeah. can. But yeah. like, you I, know, go one below that there, where I'm bigger. You yeah. know, so like that. Just like how you have it like that when your leg is stationary, I found I could kind of. Put pressure cool. down the leg and use it to kind of push and twist Pivot around. around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Where I found it a lot harder before. We're giving away tips now for the compares. Fuck. But see, there's a try side try actually right there, right side. No, on the main panel. There, I'm doing it traditional style. There. No, you're not. Yeah, your legs, your no. legs back. Your legs. No, back. I am doing it traditional style. There, New York Pro. I was the only show I ever did it that way. Really? Yeah. 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 There's something about your physique, like the way it flows, like even your side chest. This combination of like the glute, the ham, details. the way it all kind of comes together, it yeah. makes it just makes it look better. As a whole picture, it's just like boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's very aesthetic. It's like Should flex it... in some shots, you know. Some shots for Flex Lewis just look oh, good. Yeah, that, even if you... Look at Flex Lewis's side tricep. Oh, that's a good that's one. a good one. That's a good one for sure. I don't know what his side tricep about, but I like his um side chest. Yeah, I think because the details. Yeah. Like, say, in the glute ham area, like, just those little... He yeah, did, he did, he, wait, Flex did the modified side tricep, though. A lot of time. Uh, oh, yeah, the front-facing one? Yeah, he always did front-facing. He did yeah. the front tricep. I don't even the, see, the cord, I don't even, I don't cord even cord see cord. one here. Well, there's a side chest there, but... Yeah, I saw the side chest. Yeah, Flex was another one with all those... I little... prefer his side chest positioning. There's a picture of him next to Phil there on the right, just at the bottom right corner now. And I just like the way he sits in it. Yeah. I don't I don't love the tucked in ass look. He's just showing his glutes in it. Like you see how glutes. see how Flex is like he's does not tuck in his glutes Tuck in. versus Bill's shooting it out. I feel like this is more bubbly, whereas this is kind of yeah. like comes straight it's, down. Yeah. Yeah. I think his flex is all just about showing lines, isn't it? So he flexes everything. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally think... I totally get why he's doing it. I just yeah. like the I think I'm like more the traditional style. I'm sure Rode, Branch Roden would have had a few side triceps that were pretty good. Oh. A bit, yeah, like crazy. I just say Roden and Brandon have great side triceps too. Rami uh, did as well in the beginning. Rami did, yeah, like New York Pro Rami. Yeah. yeah, when he was full. Yeah, this is a pretty fucking nasty. Oh, segment. that was oh, a, a photo 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 photo. The one there on the left, on the left, and the down one. Down one. No that's left, it. left, left. Yeah. Oh, there's one there, but there's also one that's, here that's the, really he, good. He, he's not in that shot. If you go down and then left. See that forward? Where? That's the Olympia left, left. Yeah, that one. Yeah. It's oh, not yeah, quite, yeah, yeah. But that's the detail. That's Shoot 2009, that. right? Yeah, he got second there. Fuck yeah, crazy. yeah. He had a really nice obliques. That's why I think it was a good shot for him. Yeah, that's that helps. Oh, look him. at that. That's decent. He's got good traps as well. The traps always help him out. He was a bit of a beast when he old brunch. It's funny how people talk about someone when they're competing versus after when you look back and you're like, why was anybody talking shit? This Wait, guy was, this guy was incredible. And white? Hey, what's that black and white with Dorian? That was quite cool. That's when he come and trained in uh, Temple. Yeah. That's uh, Dorian. He's doing it different there. He's got yeah. the like, like bunch back. of crazy legs, man. 
Yeah. I like it though. I just would have settled that shoulder into it more, but that's such a crazy yeah. bone. I think he's stuck. <laughs> I think he's stuck. Literally, he looks, he looks like he's struggling. Yeah. That's a cool right. shot though, isn't it? So Put down James, your fucking mouth. James, back to the back to the Arnold prep. So uh what's different between this prep and last prep? Less calories, more calories. It's very more... similar. This prep's very similar. Are you doing the same thing you did last time in that like you're cheating every few days, like getting Needed. calories in? Yeah. Yeah. But what I'll do this time is just spend a little bit longer in that hole just at the end. Yeah. I'm a few pounds lighter than last time down from last time. So when I hit, like I got down to 275 a few days ago, mm. which was crazy. I dropped yeah. from 281 to 275 in two days. So I spent a day there extra. Yeah. And then I think, I like, whereas I like last that. year, yeah. yeah, whereas last year I would have been like, oh no, eat straight away. So yeah. I'm just being more mindful of being in that place for another day but what i'll do is i probably won't train i'll just be active and have a rest day so that i'm getting some fat loss but not aggressive fat loss yeah. and then and then i counter that on the following day with some like I replenishing like so yeah i'll just yeah same kind of shit really what is this uh what's this show mean to you because it's like it's basically a mini olympia i mean minus minus yeah. body or minus uh derek everybody's everybody's kind of there uh, if i'm honest like obviously like it's a show that I want I want a show in my career. I don't know if it will ever happen because I don't know what my capabilities are, but I want a show to be the show, the awakening, where people like fuck Jay did no like Jay was better than he Yeah. Jay had more in him and he brought it to that show. Yeah. 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 That's that's what I really want. Um because I believe I believe if I get it right I'm not saying I can win, but I can't say I can't because there's no point being that way. Yeah. Yeah. Because think- if Samson was like that, then he would never have won. Right, right. If Ian was like, he would have never won. Like, you can't, I can't write myself off. I want to see James blasting full on stage. I well, don't think we've seen that. I think, what really. we, I think what we've always seen is crazy round James. And then when he's super round on stage, it's not peeled and when he when I haven't married it yeah you haven't married the peeled and Peel. full it's it's always been one or the other yeah. yeah you've been close you've been close a couple times I got it wrong at the Olympia I was I, I liked how I looked at the Olympia when I landed in Vegas those white shots where I'm pretty see-through looking yeah and then I just didn't really know whatever I was doing up to the point just didn't work yeah, yeah um yeah. so i don't know i think i've got myself into a position where i could be really good and then i just haven't been able to manipulate that last bit and that's again why having milos alongside me through his prep knowing what i'm doing when it gets to those last few weeks and days mm-hmm. being able to have more calculated approach to those final bits because i'll be honest with you i'm a, i just guess yeah like yeah. I've, I've been guessing for a long time when it comes, uh, you mean when it yeah. comes to the, when it comes to the peak at the end? Dude, yeah, like last year, every show I did last year, well, not last year, the year before, because I had last year off because of the Kino, um, the the UK Arnold, the Tsunami Cup, and the Olympia, I was just peaking myself on yeah. Phil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it kind of worked at two. I wasn't lean enough to get the best out of it. If I was yeah. five six pounds leaner, I could have probably landed better because I would have been more responsive. Yeah, uh, but then the Olympia, that on top of the times. Because I do think a lot of it is what we saw again at this Olympia this year, where people just came in looking wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I think that's just my experience of knowing how to deal with a longer day. Sure. Um, not that I really know what the fuck I'm doing anyway, but yeah. So this 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 Arnold does mean a shit lot because I want to be able to end my career being one. I want to end my career being one of the best of my time, like Ian. Mm-hmm. Like I think I'm better than I've shown. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think everybody. Yeah. I think everybody has a year where they kind of break out a little bit. Like yeah. Ian, what you were 21. Oh, yeah, I would say like just a few years. It's like a few years ago, all of a sudden Ian started winning everything. Yeah, 2020, 2021, it was uh, like uh, since 29 end of 20 uh since 2020 I didn't lose a show. Yeah. Every yeah. show I did 2020, 2021, 2022, I won every single one outside like obviously the Olympia. The Olympia, the yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. And that's the thing you 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 were going into shows and you were the guy that everyone's the guy watching. Everyone every show. Yeah, and I think if you can come out of bodybuilding being that guy, you are what Branch was to me when I was coming up or what Dexter was or what, you know, those guys, the muscle tech guys, like we used yeah, to look yeah. up and be like, these guys were always in the call-outs. And yeah. then I think you've got a legacy on, 
competition alone, obviously, if you can build a legacy externally with other factors, brilliant. But I do, I am a bodybuilder's bodybuilder, so I do want that. Yeah. Um, you want your because, legacy, you want your legacy when you're finished to be one of the top tier bodybuilders. I want it to be like, fuck that year. James yeah. was fucking good, man. And, and there, if there's also see, a yeah. team on the other side, too. There's like a massive semblance of peace, like yeah. knowing that the, there was like if you hang it up and be like i never quite nailed it like i know i could have been better versus like i can look back at shows like texas or the 21 or 20 olympia or some of these shows and be like i fucking nailed it like i could not have been better than that i think that's as good as i could have been and i was like very happy with that and i can look back at that and be like you know what i got some shots and got some shows where i fucking hit the nail on the head you know yeah 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 Uh, and you know it's very simple for me because we've just had this conversation and Black and white, even Ben just said, we haven't seen you quite get it right. So as long as that's still you're going to question, then there's that's, still an opportunity. That's yeah. the ultimate, that's yeah. the ultimate bitch. Yeah. 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 Like Ian well, said. at the same time, it's the, it's the reason to go because to do it. Yeah. Because it, if they were like, Jay, you did, you were your best. And you know. Yeah. <sighs> no, and that, but wait a minute. That's important though, because yeah. like, look, I've been my best. And I know where I stood in the tur- in in the IFBB at my best, so there's still peace in that. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Like, okay, I'm you not just want to be your best, not a top tier bodybuilder, but I still know I did everything I could do. You know what I mean? So that it's, it's there, that sense. that's where you find your peace. So it's the same thing yeah. for you, James. Once I mean, you yeah. once you marry those two things, you're like, okay, this is what I had to offer. Exactly. What else can you do then? You can't you can't doubt yourself then. No, I don't look at it back yeah. on the other side now being like, oh, I wish I got top five at the Olympia or I wish right. I'd won more shows or I wish I'd won an Arnold or something. I like look back at it of like the times where I fucking nailed it and like felt good about it and like felt confident and like walked down the other side of just like, fuck yeah. Like I, I feel yeah. like that is as good as I could have been. Like you have that walking out. It feels good. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. funny actually going back to what you asked me earlier about like getting into an athlete's head. Mm-hmm. I had I had this little tricky situation with Hunter before Tampa. And Tampa wasn't a stacked lineup. Mm-hmm. So it was this kind of, uh, my concern was that he was being complacent with it. Right, right. right? So right. There, there was a risk of him being complacent. Like, hey, I'm going to, like, I'm the only kind of top, top tier, top Olympian yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> And I said to him, I don't give a fuck who stands next to you. I only care about the look. We have to nail the look. I don't care whether you're the only person on the stage, whether there is the, it's the look. And you always have to, and that's why I said, well, what you guys are kind of alluding to, it's like if you can walk away and you're only ever going to look back and have that look. Like Ian's going to show that picture of him in Texas or look back on that. And you're not going to like put it into a reference about, oh, well, this guy was here. This guy was on stage two. And you're not going to put it in context. It's just no. that look. Did you nail yeah. that fucking look? Well, I mean, he's seventh. He's seventh at the Olympia two times, but he's still referencing the Texas look. Yeah, yeah. right. He's not. When when we look up the best pictures of Ian, we're looking up the Texas show most likely. Yeah, Yeah. we're not looking up the Olympia, even though that's a a much bigger status. I like Arnold. Arnold Look as well. Yeah, Arnold was good. I mean, well, they were right. They were following each other. They were pretty close. Twenty twenty and twenty twenty one Olympia. Texas and uh, the Arnold were like my best four for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, in Hunter's case too, that was a totally different scenario because Hunter was kind of fighting against himself because yeah. people had just been saying this guy can never get in shape. Yeah. So, so it was almost like he was out to prove something to the public, not, not to beat other bodybuilders. It's like, Hey, but I, I think even if he'd have come in off again, he still probably would have won. No, I know that, but people would have been like, but it That's wouldn't have he had to, it, yes. it, it wouldn't have helped yeah. him though because the the bodybuilding public would have been like, yeah, he won, but he's still out of shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you he, have your own fights as well. Yeah, you have to show people sometimes. Like it's weird on the, game. on the other side. I was almost sometimes when I knew I was like, I'd go into a show and I like I was one hundred percent almost confident I was going to win, like one hundred percent sure. I'm like, there's no in this lineup that is even close to me. It almost motivated me to like want to like widen the gap. Yeah, yeah open. make it as fucking like, huge. Look, as I'm gonna win, but I want to like I want to make it wide. bigger. I want to make it bigger, 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 bigger. You know, just piss them off in the sidelines. Just, yeah. yeah. So it's like if it's like, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna win anyway. So might as well just put my fucking nose to the grindstone, win by as much well, as. Possible. So you're the football team that wins like eighty five to zero. Yeah, you're like just like, oh, I... you win. You might as well just fucking win. You know, like. <laughs> I didn't realize they had a fucking mercy rule out here. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I don't, know, I don't know. Hard. I don't know if it applies everywhere, but I have heard of that where they're like, you can't run up the score. Yeah. yeah. Right, we're, talking, we're, talking, we're talking. We're talking. 
We're talking about yeah. American football. Sorry, James. Yeah, I think yeah. it was like one, just like <laughs> what, 45. Like... Once they're 45 ahead, they cut the game. I'm like, no. Fucking you know what? Run, let them let them run and then mm. let this team learn a fucking lesson. You let know how feel, you know, let them feel what it feels like to be just fucking decimated, you know? You know how yeah. demor how demoralizing that is? We won a champion when I was played high school football, we won a championship the second year I played. But the first year we played this team, I swear to God, <laughs> they had players on their team that seemed like they were 30 year old men. Like <laughs> they killed us. I think the score was like, like the, yeah. the score was like 60 something, nothing. I'm like, what the fuck? This isn't even, this is not even fucking normal. Like these, these guys were like six, five, like fucking two fifty, and in, in grade nine and 10. So <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So I don't agree with the mercy rule and I've been on the other side of it, but I still you didn't forget it. You didn't forget it. I didn't, no, I still remember the, the fucking way I felt that day. I was like, fuck. yeah. Whereas when you, if you pull the plug on it, these kids are going to, ah, that's okay. Yeah. That's think, a bit of that oh, modern mentality. You think yourself. It? Yeah. 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 It's good to get your ass kicked sometimes. No, there's yeah. there's lessons to be learned and like getting just pulverized. Yeah. You need fuel. Listen, when you go to the gym, what are the thoughts in your mind? That I don't want to be at the end of like the bottom of the pack. Yeah. Or, like you've got to have some sort of fucking desire to win. But if you think about it, we're constantly failing, right? You fail within a set. Like mm. we we search for that. We hunt for that failure. Yeah. I don't know if well, that's true though. Well, you don't hunt for that grind and failure rep because you have someone else lift the weight for you. No, that's not... a spot pull. That's not what I meant, you fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I meant it's not really failure because you're succeeding. But yeah, but it's how you look at it, right? It's like you challenge the, the success. Like if I put, like if I put, if I put five plates on a squat bar, which is heavy for me, and I say I want to squat this ten times, and even if I fail at the tenth rep, I still succeeded. I didn't really fail. I succeeded. Okay, Wait, you, that's the difference. So you limited and I, yourself I wanna... from the beginning by saying ten reps. No, no, yeah. but no. Wait, wait. Just shut the fuck up. Wait, pussy. We all know when you I put want to something... do as many reps as possible. Right, right, right. So we, but we all, but right, right. But we all know when you put a certain weight on the bar, you kind of know where you're gonna land. Yeah, you know where you're gonna land, but you can't limit yourself saying I want to do this. Many. I didn't say limit. Don't fucking don't patronize me. Did. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. I meant like this is where I think I know I should be, yeah. and I'll go as far as I can. Anyway, um, okay, James is gone, so let's do some questions. Uh, we got like half an hour left. Is there any Arnold? James in his pants. Is there are any Arnold prep questions that I forgot to ask James? I don't think so. That you guys. Where's he going to put? Where, where's he going to place? You already well, asked he, him. That. So he just said he wants to win. Yeah. Well, did you ask him directly where he's going to place? You asked what he hoped for. Yeah, that's kind of a that's kind of a loaded. Down. I don't really like to ask that. It's kind of a loaded question. Like, what's the guy going to say? If he says I'm going to lose, it like makes him feel bad. If he says he's going to win, then it people are like, oh, he's cocky. Like, you kind of like put the guy in a really bad spot when you're like, James, where do you think you're going to place? <laughs> First. Ben, ben wanted me to ask the question. I said, it's a stupid question because there's no good answer. If you say like, if Spice you say eggs. like, if you say like eighth, people are like, oh, he's too hard on himself. If you say first, well, like, oh, he's too well, cocky. Listen, it's like I said the other day. The, the the margin, depending on what percentile you are of your ability, you could be the bomb. You could be close to the top. If someone else isn't in their percentile of their top, you right. could be top. Right. So it's not just what you're doing. It's what they're doing. Right, right. Well, it's And I hope, I hope that I get it exactly right. And a few yeah. people might get a little bit, you know. You're like, I hope everybody else gets it wrong. And I get it right. Well, <laughs> touch. I also want them to be good, but because you've got to be good people. But um, Noah, it, it's funny because me and Ian were talking about this, and I said that the depth of this lineup is pretty crazy. Like, there's a lot of it's guys that there are a lot of guys that are like right in the same. Yeah, you know, like people could really shift positions. We, we want to kind of prove yeah. our self. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've been there's people in the show that have beat me, and then I've beaten people that have beat them. Yeah. But I've not beat them, vice versa. So it's a bit like, oh shit, like where do we stand? Well, like I was just thinking Justin Rodriguez. You've never competed. Yeah, like, I've not beat Justin. Right. But I've beat people that people have beat that Justin. Be yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like, oh shit. And then, you know, you got Raf coming in. Yeah. Raph, John's coming back. Yeah, John's fucking Rubiel. good. Rubiel is the new Rubiel's... guy. Papa. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's like, you just and don't know. Hardy's got a point to prove. You know that man's fucking pissed. I feel like Rubiel and you is going to be a good match. I agree. You both I'm have ma him. you both have massive legs. Yeah, these legs are. There's something else, mate. 
Uh-huh. I don't know. They're, like, they're, they're a bit real. They're real crazy. I want to well, see. Just find out when they're standing next to yours. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My legs in twenty twenty, I would have put next to him because mine were definitely bigger than they are now. But Why your legs shrank? I've been quite focused on trying to get my upper body to be more out. Yeah. Have you ever beat Akeem? Yeah. You beat Akeem? No, wait, 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 wait. Did he do the Olympia? If he did the Olympia in, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. think he did that Olympia. The one there was like I've done two. Guys. Yeah, I don't think he did that Olympia. He did two Olympia where he was sixth, and then he did another one where he was quite a bit lower. Yeah, do I do... don't know. I don't think I have directly. What about Raf? I've beat Raf twice, and then he yeah. beat me the last time because the Olympia. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then what about? I was Mahal? close. He was like eleventh, and you were tw- like twelve. No, nah, this one is when I got like I was actually number sixteen. I didn't do that. Oh, but I was too okay. soft. But I'm interested to see where Raf. I'm interested to see where Rafa places because. Yeah. There's a lot of guys with a lot of mass in this show. Yeah. And I know he's got a beautiful physique, but I don't know if he's going to be able to put up, put on enough mass. He's, he's a lot bigger. Well, that's a very good body. No, though. but we're talking about like Justin looks really good. Hottie's big as fuck. Andrew, if he nails it, is huge. You know, J- James, Rubiel, Samson, like these guys are all really thick bodybuilders. If I don't lose any pop on this prep and I come in as blasting as i can in good shape then i'm happy to stand next to anyone yeah yeah it's just yeah. i just like ben said i've got to have the, the the muscle there yeah mo is another good one that's in the show antoine yeah there's some big legs in this show mo's got, <laughs> there is, there is. Mo's got massive legs antoine's got big fucking legs yeah, yeah. mo's good and he's been working hard for a good solid year i think he took last year off yeah, year, so. Yeah, um yeah, yeah. so we me and him are kind of in the same position we kind of took that time he's out show, to improve he's show was that olympia right that's yeah. the last time do you stage. feel, James? Do you feel any more pressure because you took the year off, or you don't care? No, I don't really think about it. Time passed quite fast, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I mean, I, I, and because it was for Gino, I was like, I don't mean, I don't mean for you personally. I mean, like, do you care about social media pressure? Like, oh, well, he took a whole year off. He better be incredible. Uh, I haven't seen. Do you know what? I haven't really seen that out there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think fortunately, I got quite a nice audience. Yeah, that aren't too like, oh, well, he's done because he had a year off. So, supportive, eh? Yeah, yeah I think yeah, so. Yeah. A lot of them. Um, so basically- I'm trying to be better with social media. Like I'm trying to put out rather than take in too much yeah. lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, um, I just put that out there. Now everybody's going to think it. Now, oh god, he's had a year off. What's happened? But that's why I do do updates. Like I, I know I'm a bit boring because I do do updates and show training and stuff, and probably should just not show. But no, that's again. What, you mean? what else are you like, going to put up? Well, like we said earlier, it's like what makes you enjoy bodybuilding. Yeah. No, I mean, what else are you going to post? That's what I used to post, your physique, up, physique updates, your training. Yeah, but you know, it's like some people are like, oh, you should hide till show day. And I'm like, this ain't fucking 1996 no more. Like, you can't do that shit. No, no. But well, you can, but then no one's going to sponsor you. <laughs> yeah, plus I don't I don't think it makes a difference. Fans want to see it. Friends yeah, want to yeah. see it. You know, yeah. fucking hell. All right, let's do some questions. Uh, name a sport celebrity that you think could have done really, really well in bodybuilding. A sports uh, celebrity. Yeah, could... somebody from the... This is from uh, Julian. NFL, yeah. NBA, MMA, MLB, boxing, golf. I mean, there's, de- there's definitely some... I mean, I'd love to see Mike Tyson version bodybuilder. Yeah, he had good genetics. I have a friend that's a runner in the UK, a guy called Harry Akins, that would be a oh, good yeah, Harry Akins is fucking jacked. Yeah, yeah, Harry would be good. I know who he is, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a gladiator quick. now. Yeah. yeah. He was all... Even when he was running track, he was like... Bro. Uh, Jack, like awkwardly was, big compared to everybody else. He, he, was, we were in he school. was running. Yeah. Yeah, he was running around when I was racing. I was We were looking at him in school and like what the fuck's up with this guy? He was eating yeah. KFC at lunch Crazy. and he looked like that. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Uh are we ever gonna see Guy on the podcast again? We get this question every week. Every week. Uh maybe every, every week you answer it, people seem to not hear the answer. <laughs> they don't maybe, take note. Just just keep waiting, maybe. Um does a Two milliliter dose count as a bomb, or does it have to be three milliliters in order for it to be considered a bomb? It's got to be three mils to be. It's got to be three mils. It's got to be three mils. You know what I'm talking about, or no? Two mils is, two mils is pussyfoot shit. It's got to be. A yeah, whole... I don't know. It's just terminology. You know, it says like I did a three mil bomb in my shoulder. Oh, I'm so like... when you're doing a shot. <laughs> yeah, but it's only a bomb if it's the full syringe. Yeah, yeah it's not a you bomb. Call it mil, you call it mil like we do, but then yeah. I hear people say CC. Yeah, that's so, sometimes people say CC. Who? Do, why do they do CC sometimes? I don't know. That's... Cubic. Was it a cubic? Yeah. I don't know, no, I don't know what the... Stick to mills. Did you ever do two mil? Two mil's not a bomb, right, James? 
A bomb is nah, three mil. Five mil. What's bro. the mo- what's the most in one shot? Five mil is definitely yeah, a five. five. Those big old five. five mil barrels, bro. Yeah, that's where a bomb. Gonna, atom bomb. Where are you going to put an five? atom bomb? Where are you Dude, gonna put- I think I've done. I think I've done five in the shoulder. One He's time. definitely done five. This five. Five mil is a fucking infection waiting to happen. Ben, who was that? Um, because when we say this about like, but when you think of if you were to dribble five mils on your counter, it's like it's literally so it's little nothing. liquid. Oh, is it it's, not it's literally a teaspoon. It's a teaspoon oh. of liquid, you know? Well, yeah, but... who was that bodybuilder, Ben? European one, massive. He used to train at Muscle Works, white dude. I can't remember his freaking name yet, but he was like one of them weird European freaks. And apparently he, every shot he done was five mil. Five every. mil bomb. And he would do multiple five mil bombs a day. Nah, five he was doing like 20 mil a day, I heard. Bombs. Pink cushion. Uh, if everyone on the pod had to coach themselves for an entire year, no training partners, no one's help, who would look the best for a show? Such a fucking I mean, Ian's loaded, loaded, quite loaded. Yeah, well, Ian's Ian. naturally shredded, so Ian would win. Who, you're going to end up. I, I, think I, would end up being, I think I would end up being. <laughs> it's given to the of my mind and flat as a pancake, though. <laughs> It's like if James but, like I'm, I'll end up fatter than when I started. Fuck you. <laughs> He'll be like, fucking. Just fucking... <laughs> for, 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 like when, when I eat and I'm full, then my stomach gets smaller. So I'm just gonna eat pizza every day. <laughs> my, stomach, my stomach's gonna do this. What? Boys, he be Ben Stiller. I can't believe me. the amount of discrediting bullshit I take on this podcast. Fuck you guys. You will be Ben Stiller Roman, at the end of Dodgeball. Roman has coached himself kind of for a lot of shows, and yeah. he's got crazy feel doing that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Um, has James gotten to six gear since the last time? I don't think I have. But I've been cruising the like five. Cruising the five fifth gear. Which ain't bad. Yeah. <laughs> Ian, do you know what six gear is? No. Hey, I took James when James has hit... really good sex, he hits six gear. Oh, yeah, okay. and, and you know, I, I you know when you're going you know when you're doing you're, you're having sex, but sometimes you just go that extra step. Six gear, yeah. Dude, I, I got I got six gear on mushrooms the other week when we were back home. <laughs> we went away for a night in a hotel. Like my, my mom's gift to us was like to look after the kids. Yeah. So Denise and I went away to a hotel and hit some mushrooms. I, I think it was pushing I've never had hours. I've never had sex on mushrooms. Is it good? I have. So here's the thing. Like, I know you have. You had my house. Your, your house. <laughs> Mom, here, do you know what? <laughs> In your guest you know bed, found yeah, fuck, I had to I burn. Found... I had to burn those sheets. <laughs> Go sex on. is on mushrooms. The the sex part is better, but what other part I is smoke, there? If if I smoke a joint, Go the end sweat. part is better. Don't say talk. Oh, you mean like just finishing? Yeah, like finishing or when you're high is like almost unbearable. It's the so finishing good. is always the but, best part. But hang on, no. no when you like... mushrooms, it was like an hour of just like. Almost, almost there. Like epic. Yeah, it was like it was. Uh, the, yeah. It was better during, but then I don't know if I like that. Quite as high. Depends what sort of person you are, man. I like. I mean, or just do both. Man, or just do both. Man. Smoke a joint halfway through and carry yes. on. Are, are you a man that enjoys like a good post-sex cigarette? You know. No. Cigar. Really, I don't. I only smoke when I'm driving. Yeah, but like right after sex, that's a, that's like uncant. Like that's one of the best times to have a cigarette. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. It, it looks cool as well. I'm gonna, gonna get a cigarette. Smoke, right. it, smoke it in your bed, in your bedroom. Like don't go outside yeah, yeah. and fucking just like yeah. lay in bed, just light up a cigarette. Did you hear, did you hear what James? Said? No. Say <laughs> it, James. Oh no, no, I just said I think it's quite a cool image. You know, that when you got like your chubby cock out and the cigarette yeah. in your mouth and you're pure <laughs> naked, steam coming off your back. For like, sure. Yeah. Like something out of fucking Sin City. You're still, still sweating. You're like, <laughs> yeah, man. Just do it tonight, bro. Don't even, don't go outside. Just lay in bed. Fucking just smoke a cigarette right there. I'll get an ashtray. I'll put it on my nightstand, and, and I'll just, yeah, just tonight. ash on the carpet. You're good. <laughs> I, I'm gonna do it in you. I'm gonna do it in his guest room next week. I'm just gonna, yeah, push. just light it up. Yeah. Just... <laughs> I'm gonna buy a pack full of mushrooms. Full of mushrooms. Go to seventh yeah. gear and then light a cigarette. Yeah. We've, t- we've talked James into smoking now. That's I'm gonna turn into, I'm gonna start smoking after sex now. You bastards. <laughs> I'm eating out the window, top floor. No, James, uh, James needs a cigar. I okay, James wait a minute. A cigar. We did something like where Fuad's like, I only smoke while I drive, and James would be like, I only smoke after sex. <laughs> you know? yeah, you no, go. but That's wait true. a minute though. We didn't finish this other conversation. I don't know what we went with that. <laughs> I don't. I don't think. Oh, the sex bit. Yeah. I don't know if it, it sounds enjoyable to me to be like have really awesome sex and then a shitty finishing. No, wow. it's no, 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 no. I'm not saying it's shitty. I'm not saying it's shitty. But it's not as good as the first part. I'm saying if it takes you, so if you bolt and you're sober, right? It's yeah. that's that's your standard. That's your baseline, right? Right, right. If you take mushrooms. The during sex part is like 
epic. Yeah, I guess. And then, so. and then the finish will be like 150. percent Oh, so it's still better than. Oh, it's, oh okay. it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay, I'm good. I'm good with that then. But, it's still good. but if you if I smoke a joint and then we have sex, the sex is like here. Oh wait, but the finish is like. Uh, I'm, I'm I've on never, that. I've I'll never go, had I'd sex after a joint. Never. Or I, just do I, both, and then. I, to the moon. I've, nev- I've never fucked after smoking weed, but that's only because I hate smoking weed. I mean, oh, I after that, a joint. I feel like I, I can't fuck, do nothing. I, I fuck weird when I'm on set, like when I smoke weed. Yeah. <laughs> I fuck weird, stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> she's got headphones. Yeah, what? Yeah. What? I fuck weird. <laughs> what is I? What is I fuck weird? I want to ask Melissa. Ask Melissa. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see a demonstration of no, the no, weird no. rhythms. Ask her. Still true. Melissa. Yeah. Does Ian fuck weird on when he smokes a joint, like when he's high? What the yeah. fuck's he doing? What does what he is, do? Can you tell me? Can you tell me without being too graphic? Can you tell me what like fucking weird means? Be graphic. Does he make like weird noises and shit? <laughs> Wait, are we talking like really high or like drunk and high? high. No, 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 not high. drunk. Just high. Just high. Okay, you don't want me to talk about the other one. What I'm drunk and high. Yeah. <laughs> I, when I was on the mushrooms at his house. I already know. Yeah. What, I already know the drunk and high Ian. Wait, when you were on mushrooms at Black's yeah, house? Yeah. What do you mean you were super aggressive? Yeah, I know that. That's he already told me. He literally told... felt like he fucking hated me. He, he fucked the shit out of me. I was almost crying. So that's that's what I mean. Sure you know what I, like, is. You know when it, you know when I said I hit six gear? Yeah, I was really abusive to the least. <laughs> like I was really like abusive. Six gear. Why yeah. does that happen to you guys? It feels great. It's fun. Something I was like, you're going to you're gonna you take think... this and you're going to like it whether you like it yeah. or not. Do you think you're like hiding it normally so when you're like inebriated it feels like you can like release all that aggression maybe yeah the big, the big man that's comes a, out that sounds <laughs> i think that sounds right i think it sounds right when you're yeah we're like deep deep down that's our desire yeah for us god what yeah. is a so i still don't know what weird fucking is i don't know either to be honest yeah, what is weird fucking oh well sometimes if ian's really baked he's like very visual Visual. And I'm not talking about like looking at things you'd expect. He like wants to make like eye contact. Yeah. Oh, he gets like, <laughs> yeah, like, like, like weird like that. Yeah. Hold my face like this. Well, because yeah. the first thing for when she first said it, I thought the obvious. Yeah. <laughs> Just that's like, normal. No, I get I get like sensual weird, you know. He like yeah, wants to make eye contact and he wants to say like I love you and like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, want yeah. to make love and shit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I think one in t- one in ten. I feel I think like it's, that. I think it's funny that kissing and eye contact is weird sex. <laughs> no, no, no. no yeah, you. No, it's, it's, it's like con. He needs it's overly. Con- it's over. Oh, it's like in a movie. Weird. Like you're in a movie. Yeah, it's like I'm yeah. weird. I'm weird about it for sure. You're like yeah. petting her hair and shit while you're like. Yes, like, yeah. literally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you're so fucking beautiful. Like, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I get like that, like one in ten. Yeah, like just randomly every now and then, and then she's like, "Oh, you actually do love me," and then it's back to normal. After. <laughs> <laughs> the next one, just bend over and shut the fuck up. <laughs> you, know, you know, I was uh, I was super baked a few weeks ago, like off from a different planet. And right at the end, it was so intense that I was on top, and I was I was laughing because it was like almost unbearable. Wow, Denise thought I was crying. Oh no! So, but she didn't know until like. I got out of the shower and she's like, Are you okay? I'm like, Yeah. And that was just like brutally intense. And she's like, I thought you were crying. I'm like, We had a way different experience then because yeah. I was like laughing because yeah. it was so yes. good. And she's laying there with me on top of her thinking I'm crying. Oh, <laughs> like, no. Oh, that would be some emotional and, and shit. She was, she that's, was that's high too. Yeah, she was high too. So, like, the paranoia that she had of like, Well, my husband's there and something but, crying after we had sex. Okay. But if, if you would have told me you cried during sex, it wouldn't surprise me. Fuck off! Soft. He's basically saying you're a soft gun. No, he's just Ben's overly romantic. That's all. I'm just saying. It's like, only it, if there's not. Enough, it's only if there's not enough spit on it, and then it's like ah. <laughs> I can't say I've ever cried during sex. No, I've never no. been that emotionally in tune. I'm like, oh my no. god, this is a perfect moment. I've nearly, I've nearly <laughs> cried. I've nearly <laughs> cried from snapping my banjo. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, I nearly cried when that happened. I was like, oh, that's the worst pain. Banjo string and snappage it's like, is it, It's like weak for heel as well. What's a banjo string snap? The back of your cock, the strip. Yeah, yeah. Banjo, We can play a little tune on it, a little string. Oh, <laughs> I've, what the I've, fuck I've, are you I've, talking about? I've torn Pull your that fucking before. foreskin down if you have one. I don't have foreskin. The well, then they get okay. a bit on the back that connects to your fucking piss hole. Oh, you know the bit that does this? Why don't you guys get that cut off? 
It's gross. Well, it's, super it's super sensitive. Send us a picture, mate. Oh yeah, don't. Dude, <laughs> See, I don't want. Like, you got an anteater, man. I don't want to fuck. So wait, wait, wait. You got none of that. that <laughs> you still got that bit of ligament, though. Huh? You have that little, oh. bit, that, that little bit of skin ligament on the back. back. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I have it, but I don't know what the fuck you're talking I'm about. I'm sure I, he doesn't know. It. Let me see. Wait. Check. Come on, bro. If you ain't got that, there's something weird going on. He's literally got Careful with your headphones, mate. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Thank God. Yeah. I thought you had some, like... So I've, so Imagine having you, a cock. You ever... could... Sorry, Ben. I was going to say, like, if, you didn't have that sh- if you didn't have the bandage, screen, you wouldn't know which way your cock was facing. Yeah, it would just flop. Yeah. yeah. Just be, like, the same all the way around, like an actual yeah. mushroom. Hey, do you... Are you ever jealous of people that aren't circumcised or are circumcised? I don't even think about it. You like, I get that's this. very normal in the UK though. You're thinking by North American standards where it's like people are like, it's like, you know, no, no, I know it's a like European thing. Like they don't, uh, they're less European likely to have, I've, I've never, but really less, about less it. European. I think it's like more Europeans are uncircumcised. Probably. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I've never thought about it. You've never thought well, about did, it. With, did with Phoenix, it's Denise, I'm, I'm not deciding because. Did you is, is Phoenix circumcised? He is, but that was Donice's choice. So I was like, you can choose, but I can't make that choice for him. Yeah, I can't. So I've got principle, I'm yeah, not yeah. gonna have my son <laughs> dick cut. Like that's weird. No, I thought, like, listen, if it was done to me as a kid, yeah. I wouldn't have moaned. I wouldn't have felt no different. I would have been like, okay, sweet. That's true. I can I imagine just, it's very hygienic. I just feel like it's an extra thing to clean. Yeah, yeah but here's the other thing as well. It's more <laughs> sensitive if you keep it covered. Yeah, it's I, don't, true. I, I don't need. If you only, if you only unsheath it, if you only unsheath it for use, it's more sensitive. Yeah, it's true. I already have trouble holding my load. I don't need it to be more sensitive. <laughs> Imagine if you did have foreskin. <laughs> Jesus, you'd pull it back once and you'd blow. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> just the touch, just the reveal would be well, enough. Well, shotgun. He's like, he's yeah. like, he's like, oh, he's like oh. <laughs> little pump action going on. Yeah, pump action shotgun. Fuck yeah. Fuck Fuck you guys. <sighs> um. Yeah. Ooh, no! Nope. This is the number one bodybuilding podcast in the world. Question, question for the UK boys: What is the elite go-to pub snack? Chris KP. He says crisps, nuts, scratchings, or pork crunch. Ben, I'm going to say KP nuts. KP nuts, yeah. Decent. All I know is I dry, ro- you- dry roasted. Yeah. All I know is I sent you guys some uh, rankings on the UK food, and you guys ignored me. I did totally. I swear, I was like, I'm not getting <laughs> oh, I was driving. I literally blanked I was, it. I was driving. I was like, fuck this. I was you like, guys are, I'm not going to converse with you over in British food because you already think it sucks. Fuck you. you. Guys, it's not me. That was like the world ranking. It was like, yeah, you're of, trying to listen, push it on me. And I'm like, no. Listen, Fred, when we go back to, when we go to UK, you have to come to my mom's house and we'll do proper I'm, British food. I'm yeah, happy. Please. I'm more than happy. To. I'm not a good judge, though. I just, I just like food in general. Yeah, I'm just amazing. Yeah. <laughs> listen, Ben, you'll feed him. He'll go home. He'll go back to fucking. His, his little house and he'll be like I'm missing the food yeah I need to get sent some and then he has to call me because I'm the only Shepherd's one still pie. here and I have to ship him some shepherd's, shepherd's pie hey you know what I found out and Paul was really upset about this Arabs brought spaghetti to Italy did they Paul was really angry about that because he you know, always Italians you know, my, dad, always, my Paul... dad my dad's always banging on about how I came from Asia rather than Italy. yeah I, I I always thought that too. I always thought noodles came from Asia. Mm-hmm. Apparently, some historians say that it came from Arabs. So I hold that over Paul's head now. Never gonna trust Super Mario again, <laughs> ever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you had to, oh, this is so fucking stupid. If you had to cuddle with someone from the podcast for a whole movie, who would you pick? <laughs> uh, I don't think there's anything gayer than that. Like, I would rather like. Yeah, it's now a question of who you're willing to be gay with out of your boys. Cool. cool. Well, so you go for an older man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bit, bit of experience. <laughs> Knows his way around. Yeah. Who's like the least unattractive to you? That's the question. Like, if you were what, forced. Are you concerned to... you're going to get a chub? <laughs> if I'm cuddling, <laughs> I'm not maybe it's possible. <laughs> and if the movie is that type of movie, it has to be unattractive. It's not. It's not a. It's not a porno. You're just watching like. No, Batman. but what if it's like a, a rom com or, or a. So you're watching, no, no. you're watching Top Gun. Yeah, you're watching Top Gun. It's got a little bit of emotional parts, but it's action mostly. You know. Well, is it a case of like, oh, what their feet are on your lap and you're just holding their legs like, hello, mate. No, or you're not. Like, no, like, you're like, you're like, like a nice no. like. Yeah, if their feet are on your lap, you're in trouble. You're spooning. You're spooning. You're just spooning. Yeah, you're like, the you're spooning. Spoon, the Who would I feel the least gay with spooning? Yeah, that's a cuddle. 
Yeah, but like you can't really spoon and watch. If you said to me, if you said to me, did you cuddle with your wife and watch a movie? I'm assuming that she's a little spoon. I'm the big spoon. No, I sit up and she lays a little bit half into me. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, no, that's not. I consider cuddling like little spoon, big spoon. I consider that spooning in bed, but not when watching a movie. I consider spooning, spooning. No, but like if I'm cuddling, if I'm cuddling on the couch with my wife watching a movie. She's yeah. usually laying down in front of me. In front of you. Yeah. Look, oh, if, my, yeah. if my mum says to me, if my mum says to me, give me a cuddle before you go, I'm not spooning her. <laughs> Turn around, reverse into her. <laughs> like, the fuck? Yeah, but that's context. <laughs> Cuddling with yeah, your wife. But the sofa, yeah, because the sofa only provides you with that kind of opportunity. Yeah. It's got a back on it, so you have to go back to front. Depends yeah. how big your sofa is. You'd be pretty gay if you're front to front on a sofa. <laughs> like imagine cuddling me like front to front on the side. <laughs> okay, so let's let's define what cuddling is first. Because if somebody's just laying on my lap, I can do it with anybody. Man, I think, I think, here, I think shoulder in there. But well, remember shoulder that when I'm at your house next time. <laughs> I think the the spoon situation is the harder question. Yeah, because if you're just like, okay, you're gonna put a pillow on your lap and someone's gonna lay on it. Pick anybody. I don't give a fuck. You've got to resist any gayness. No, oh, the, the question should be if you have to like lay in bed and spoon with someone. Who are you? Yeah, thinking? if you have to spoon. Yeah, that's the toughest one. I mean, I'm trying to think of who is like the least flatulent. You know, I'm gonna go with I'm oh. gonna go with Ben. I think because he's got the best cologne. So he smells good when you got your nose it's on his neck. Yeah, that matters. Smell <laughs> matters. We peeking over his shoulder. Yeah. I'm, movie. Gonna be, I'm gonna be small spoon with giant black Samson just holding me like a baby. <laughs> oh man, <mate>, absolutely. <laughs> Samson would be comfortable to spoon into, wouldn't he? Big chest. Yeah, arms. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I didn't realize no, I get way too hot. I get way too hot with Samson spooning me. I'm like, I didn't realize up, I didn't realize I could pick small spoon. I want to be the small spoon with anybody, and then I'm fine. Yeah. Oh, You're yes. fine. You feel less. Huh? Why? You're, you're fine you to help, but you don't want to hold people. Because I don't, I don't want to hold people. <laughs> <No. laughs> I don't. So you're you're you'd rather catch than pitch. Oh, because if I'm the, <laughs> you want to be the tunnel. It's fine. <laughs> no, I don't want to be trapped. Because if you're the big spoon on a couch, then you got the back of the couch, and then you're stuck there, and then the person's in front of you. That's well, really yeah, uncomfortable. Good. If I'm on the front, then I can like escape. I can breathe. There's like there's no nothing in front of me. Yeah, but if Samson's got hold of you, you ain't moving, mate. You're not okay. fucked. That Teddy and then you got, and then it's not a, it, it's you, not feel, a, you feel this. It's not a lock in. It's not yeah, a lock in yeah, situation. It's, it's not about getting away. It's just about having nothing in front of me. I can yeah. breathe and like I won't feel like claustrophobic. Imagine spooning Samson from behind. You wouldn't even be able to see the film. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be pointless. It'd be like, well, I'm, I'm telling you this. now, I'm having nobody on my yeah. back with their arms around me. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> uh,. How do you wash your gym equipment? I don't. I just throw it away. Do you guys I'm wash married a woman. Do you guys, <laughs> guys, do you guys wash your like wrist straps and shit? No. Oh, oh, no. My if mine ever gets to the point where it smells too bad, just chuck it. I donate them yeah. to someone who's yeah. worse off when they smell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many shows until you realized you could make a living from bodybuilding? Three. Yeah. Uh, yeah, mine was three. Yeah. On my fourth show when I did Ottawa's 2013, my first like non-junior show, then I was like, I feel like I could do this. Yet. Yeah, after I think after um, Ontario, I didn't even win that show. I think I took third of that show, but I was like, fuck it, I'm doing this forever. Yeah, yeah. I kind of realized we. I think we had a good scene in England that we had. I think because Flex, we saw that he, we saw that Flex was making a living. Right. We didn't know how and how much, but he set a precedent, and we were like, if you turn pro, you can make a living. So any of us that had the idea of turning pro from that point you were like this will be a job yeah yeah i don't so know. I, I was competing like with ben and stuff you know we were doing the uk bff even though we weren't professional yet we all kind of were like oh well i will be able to make money out of this one day it's funny actually i want to ask you ian because th- th- i was th- just thinking about that when james was talking is it was kind of like frank there was other pros before us obviously but for a long time like when when I started competing, people were like, "Oh, Canadians don't make any money. Canadians don't get sponsorships." Yeah, right before me was you, Ben, Frank. So like, I had to. Well, this good is why, but the, but this is why I was saying. So it was Frank was like a year or two before me, and then it was me, then it was Ben. So it was kind of like the same thing, James. I think the next generation kind of saw us get sponsorships. Sure. Yeah. But I don't know I if that's imagine. true, Ian. Like, did you see that and think like, "Hey, I can oh, see, I never thought of it from that perspective of like make a living in terms of getting sponsorships and stuff. I just thought of it from like. This is what I'm going to do. 
Like yeah. I'm going to be a bodybuilder, whether I'm making money or not. Like I'll figure that out if I need but, to be a trainer. But my my life is going to be bodybuilding. You know. But did did Frank, me, or Ben, or anything have any impact on that? For sure. Do you, yeah. do you remember that? Yeah, of course, for oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, because I was after, flex. Yeah, because I think after after <sighs> me after Frank, me, and then Ben, there was like a slew of Canadians all of a sudden that came out yeah. and like started doing what it was like Regan and Ian and fucking. I mean, Chris. Yeah. But like, there was a whole bunch of. I think. So you taking? Are you taking? You're. What are you saying? You're taking credit for. Chris. I am taking. I am taking. A, I am. For, <laughs> ancestral. I am taking a hundred. I am, you know what? One of what? the one of the only things I'm very proud of is that <laughs> there was a period of time where everyone was like, "Don't bother. Canadians don't make money. Canadians don't get contracts. Canadians sponsorships won't come to you. Magazines won't cover you." This was all like because it was like. Yeah. Right across the border, but it was like Muscle Mag, uh, more Flex Magazine, Mustard. They didn't cover yeah. any any Canadian shows or anything. Mm. So nobody knew who the fuck we were. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, I do take a little bit of pride in that. Like, we kind of broke out and got Muscle Tech contracts. Frank was with Animal. Sci-Tech, Swell ben, Off Dog. Yeah. You know, yeah. That so was like, like, especially like coming up, like the Frank Animal at the time was like iconic when I was Yeah, Frank up. was all over the fucking place yeah. for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Um, addicted to heroin or addicted to eating your own shit? What? Jeez, clearly, clearly this person's never tried heroin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thing is, with the shit, you could kind of style it up, couldn't you? You could put it in a pan, throw some spices in there. Yeah. Oh, well, the other thing with the shit is, it's not going to ruin was... your life. Nah, but and you could probably cover it. It's like it would be so different. It's like, do I have to eat food shit or be addicted to heroin? I'm probably taking the heroin. But if it's my own shit, then it's like, yeah, we can make do, you know? No, but the way I think of it is like heroin's gonna ruin your life. Whereas good, eat, good chance, yeah. Whereas eating your good own shit. Your life. I feel like I've got enough self control that I can take No, you're addicted. Control. You're addicted. It's not self control. No, he's gonna be a completely normal but user. You know? What do we know of long term effects of eating your own shit? That might ruin your life as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We could be seriously no. ill within your five wife, weeks. Your wife isn't hanging around, so now yeah. things are changing. Well, yeah. I would do it, I would do it secretly. I wouldn't let her know. I mean, she would know on your breath, or you'd gotta oh, be after every oh, time you eat shit. Kiss her before bed. Be oh. Trust me, I have a dog that eats her own shit and you know, you know. Mm. Oh, yeah. What could you do? Yeah. I guess I'm doing. I think both situations ruin your life. How are you going to be like, oh, yeah, don't worry, bro, just eating shit again. It's fine. No one's going to know about it. I'm hiding. Who ends at the gym? You're going to know. Like, you off to take a shit at the gym, just eating it out of the fucking toilet, you know? Yeah, you think that you're like, you're going to stink as well. And actually, you're going to be fucking dying if you keep eating shit. That's the toxic waste your body's my, trying to my get. My suggestion rid of. to this, Ben, I'm thinking about this very seriously, is chop it up. Whack it in the air fryer till it turns into crisps and eat that. <laughs> because I think air, fr air fryer solves everything. <laughs> yeah, I think air fryer is poop. Are you Googling like you just bad to eat your own shit? Can you, yeah. can you season and use ketchup? Because if yes. you can use ketchup, yeah. I can get down. Dude, ketchup and fr and, uh, and you crisps. Put it in, like, you could put it in like the pork intestines and make it into a sausage and then fucking fry it up, you know? Good. What happens to a person when they eat their own poop? According to Illinois minimally. Poison Center, eating poop minimally poop. toxic. We're good. It, one second, there's audio. Eating poop is minimally toxic. However, poop naturally contains the bacteria commonly found in the intestines. While these bacteria don't harm you when they're in your intestines, they are not meant to be ingested in your mouth. It doesn't say you, doesn't say you can't. No. Well, the Russian birds no, but, on those no videos I've watched. can't take Love heroin it. either. I mean, below there it says, like, drinking your own pee, eating your own poop is perfectly safe. Or does it say it's not safe? Oh, no, while it says eating, it causes well, illness and infections. While eating poop shouldn't be, shouldn't usually shouldn't. cause severe symptoms, there are some instances when immediate medical attention is in, is needed. I see a doctor I or a lot of the like, experiences. But hang on. It, the amount of poop matters, surely, because I think they're talking about okay, okay, a little bit. They're not talking about someone sitting down with a bowl of poop and a spoon. And eating a substantial meal of shit. I swear you, that when you were yeah. typing it, I said, "Why do I feel yeah, like I want to eat?" My I don't food? know if this is a question anyone's like, you know, investigated. <laughs> I think you'd probably be fine. Why do I? Some, something there came up like, "Why do I want to eat?" Food? <laughs> I'm sure every day forever. <laughs> It says min minimally toxic. I don't think you know when women are pregnant, they get these weird. Like, can't be any uh, more toxic than like taking like a fucking Anadrol fifty. You know, right, yeah. right. Women when they're pregnant get these desires to eat like charcoal and shit. You yeah. know the weird things. 
maybe yeah. there is a situation where you get that and you well, want I'm sure to... there's that show what's that show like my strange addiction there's definitely been some people yeah, that show yeah. yeah. all right uh if you had to give a percentage how many people on average do you think nail their reverse diet after a show percentage uh, uh 20 I was going to say 15. I was going to say 15 to 20. Yeah. If, How many should? Win? The How longer many you've been doing it, I think your odds are better. I think people starting almost 0%. I tell you what, the one time you do it, you'll realize, oh, fuck, I should have yeah. done this every time. 100%. Yeah. Not me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, bit, I'm a bit like <laughs> throughout on this one summer. I'm quiet. I'm like, but did you ever do it? Did you ever nail it? I have nailed a couple of times. I've... Like I tell you what, the 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 first show that I worked with with Patrick, I came off stage and started working with him like immediately. So and I rolled into like a ten month prep basically, where I treated it like a ten month prep. It was like higher food down into lower food, but I was fucking regimented, and I did eleven pounds of stage weight in ten months. What I will say, yeah, and I was leaner, so. As far as bodybuilding goes, I'm, I'm not going to say with any certainty which one is better. But as what I will say with 100% certainty is reverse dieting is healthier. Yes. So that I, blood that, pressure and kidney health. If you ask me, if you ask me at the end of a year, who put on more muscle, the guy who reverse dieted or the guy who didn't, I can't give you the proper answer. It's going to be different hey, for everybody. So, so for me, I reverse dieted and put on substantially more muscle than when I didn't. That's fine. I'm just saying that question is going to be debatable. Whereas yeah. the health aspect of it is not, not debatable. is not debatable. Yeah, because going from you know two hundred pounds on stage, whatever the fuck anybody is, to two fifty a week later, blood is, pressure is just the... a hell on your fucking body. Yeah, yeah. That's, so... that's the issues I used to have when I was a young aspiring bodybuilder. I didn't okay. really get it, and I remember having a blood pressure of one eighty eight. Yeah, that yeah, was the same way. <laughs> I could bench two hundred kilo as a <laughs> twenty year old, whatever it was. But yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, if we had Abby at the Detroit Pro, will you be giving any special awards like yes. the most muscular? Yes. So, Ben, you want to tell them we have the Luke Award? This is cool. Right? Yeah. We have three, right? Right. We have Luke. John. Well, Luke, Luke the, we have the, the juggernaut. The, the, the right? juggernaut is the overall. Yeah. yeah. And then we yeah. have the jo John. John Meadows, which is the most conditioned most, athlete. Most shredded conditioned, yeah. Shredded. And then we have John, then we have uh, Cedric, sorry. Cedric, which is the best poser award. Yeah, that's actually a really cool. I like that. Yeah, we want to pay tribute to everybody. So yeah, that's brilliant. Or all of our friends, anyway. So do the yeah. trophies have a certain like look to them as well? Have you done them yet, or are they? Kind no, of well, play? we we didn't. I think we decided that we didn't want to do like a like figurines of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we we're going to do something nice. We just haven't. We don't so, want. To, yeah. We don't want to put it out yet. Yeah, I hear that. That's awesome, uh, man. Good for guys. Appreciate that. We will do. Uh, when is James eating the nuggets that he promised to eat? I've been too busy eating five guys. I'm sorry. And the Arnold. And the Arnold. We can do it post show. If you want to eat that. <laughs> if you want to. As well. Uh, as well. Put it on top. Okay. We'll do one more. Uh, we're all on repeat again. I don't know why they do this. Do you guys listen to music every time you have sex or is it just the TV on? What? I think the TV on. I have nothing on. I don't know I if I've say, honestly ever. I'm say, I think it's funny that he said just the TV on, as if like everybody fucks with the TV on. No, yeah. oh, I turn it off. Yeah. I have no sound when I, I I make the sound. I'm the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. You know what I really like? I like pitch black. Do you? I don't. I like yeah. seeing my. I can get I can get nasty when I'm when it's pitch you're black. So... It kind of, it's like a, it's like a little like mask and be like. No, I that's know. bullshit. That's a romantic I thing. Devi I get a little deviant. This is you. Flat. This is you being romantic again. That's what yeah. That's like no. I get no. I get fuck no. It gets dark. It's getting up when it's dark. Yeah. Yeah, but when it's yeah, I get nasty. Yeah, spit comes out. I get a little. But I want to see what's. I want to see what's going on. You know what's funny? Same, I don't want to see it clearly. I I like it. I like it <laughs> dim. Oh, it's got to be dim. If it's really bright, I'm like this. Is no, no. Weird. Like, I don't want it really bright. I like it like. I like it like I can barely see, but I can see. You know what I'm saying? A little side just, lamp. Just, you, know, you want to see the rough outline, but then you can pretend that it's someone else. I see what my, my, my... <laughs> so I can see the shape of my girlfriend. No, like you fucking ass different face. <laughs> No, the best situation is like having the on sweet bathroom light on and it's dark and it's like yeah. side light. Fucking you know? <laughs> James. 
I don't. Um, I I like lights on because I like to see the feet. So <laughs> you know, the lights are off. I can't see the feet. Do you want to see, see, a, you want see an outline of the feet, or do you want to see the feet? <laughs> I just turn. I turn my head wherever the feet are. And just watch them as I'm doing my bit. So let me ask you. If, okay, in what position is the feet most noticeable? Like, is it reverse leg cowgirl? Cocked, no, leg cocked right up. Oh, so you're like putting the feet up, and now you can look. You can look yeah. right at them while yeah, you're like like like, like, like a chicken them. bone. Yeah. Um, but See, no, thought, reverse, reverse is nice. Reverse I is nice. Like well, like reverse, yeah, reverse cowgirl. And you grab. Yeah, that's feet. a good little one. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Oops. Okay, I'm trying to think of all the feet positions. This is missionary. It's a it's a, it's a bollock one, right? Because you're like turning around. They're behind you. There is a lot of feet positions. There Ben's is. favorite position is missionary, so he can't look at feet. Yeah, he's anti. No, mine's where I'm on my back. That's the best. On my back, back is good, isn't it? When you're just lazy and let them just, ride. Just love that. Just do that with them. I have a deal, though. I have a deal. Every three know. times, the third time, I'm, I don't have to do any work. That's your deal? Oh, that's my deal. What two for that? one. So I do yeah. two, and then you do one. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> what a great deal. It's good, I love that deal. I gotta <laughs> fucking make that deal. Yeah, I like that. I'm deal. like, I'm, I'm on full-time work. Oh, no, it's too I'm, much effort. 80%. 80% of ours is me on my back. Fucking 80% of mine is me going to fucking town. Ben, I'm like, I'm, and you're still, and you're still, and you're still out of shape. How no, this is why my, this is why my plank is so good. I can plank for fucking, <laughs> I can plank for like half an hour straight. Oh, I'm a, I'm a planker. <laughs> Post plank. Yeah. I got a great, you can I got kind a, of write up a contract with your, your wives. I got a great plank, Ben. You should fucking, seriously, I can just hang I out. I don't want to see it. Don't offer, don't offer to show me your fucking plank. <laughs> James, I gotta, I gotta discuss this now with my wife. Should I think it's very? I think because the amount of effort we have to put in when we do it, we deserve a little bit. Back. You know what? I think I'm actually gonna type out like a written contract and have her sign it. Sign this. I, I think yeah. you should, and it should be pinned to the back of the bedroom door. Yeah, I think you're on. No, on the headboard. Headboard. Yeah, we can check so, off. We can check off the dates. Listen, like, it might be a bit much to say two to one, but maybe every. Th Three, you do, you get one back. It's Listen, like coffee stamp. I picture it, whoever you say with the dates, I picture it like, you know, those cleaning schedules on the back of like bathroom doors. <laughs> yeah. Fuad, Fuad, Fuad. Like January 17th, oh. 7 p.m. Yeah. Fuad, 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 summer. Fuad, yeah. Fuad, and then Fuad, 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 summer. <laughs> yeah. So for every free, you get your, it's like, you know, we get cash back a little bit. Listen, I'm good. I'm good with every five. Yeah. I'm, I'm, good, I'm good. That's nice when you go to Cafe Nero and they give you the stamps every yeah. 10 coffees. Every coffee. Every one back, right? That's buy the three, one. Buy three, get one free. But James, is that. there is there a combo though? Is there one combo. where you like you? Yeah, like <laughs> combo. Well, it's just a box meal. Combo like, deal. Chips, <laughs> burger, and fucking. I mean, nuggets. like, is there a time? Yeah, when you both on the side. With yeah, it. yeah. Is there a time when you're both working? Well, yeah, but it depends if I'm behaving or not. If I choose to misbehave and be aggressive, then I'll change it. But I try. No, to, but what I'm to saying is, like, do you ever look at the sheet and go, "No, no, there's no." We, we both we no. both put in the work this time. No, that's more. If there's any, if I put in any, it counts as me. I believe. <laughs> if I put in any, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a lawyer. As soon as you have one minute working, you oh, honestly, it. if there's any interaction from so, my part, this party. Then I'm charging. So in actuality, Ben, what that means is Yannick is doing all the work all the time, but James yeah. is claiming that he's doing it because he does like one minute of pumping. When you see her, you ask her the situation, she'll tell you exactly that I do a lot of work and I just expect some payback every now and then. Hmm. Keep the healthy Ian? relationship. But are you guys like on a even like you guys seem like you're even? We're probably like uh 60 40. 65, yeah, 60 to 70, 30, you know? You're, Actually, you're, you're, like... you're, the, you're the 70. No, the I'm the bigger number, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, ben, ben, no. so... so Ben's the only one that's got it made. Yeah. But that's why Ben cries when he has sex. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's here. Okay. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Say it. Say it. Say it. Oh, I lost my. I lost my train of thought. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh no, I got it. I got it. I got it. If All I'm right. sober, if yeah. I'm sober, because there's three levels, right? There's either mushrooms, weed, or sober. Yeah. If I'm sober, I don't like changing positions. Once we start, why? I'm kind of that's that's what we're doing. But once I, if I'm here or here, then it's like okay, let's wait a minute. So if you start and you're doing missionary, you're like I'm finishing here. That's it. No, no, no. Like, I'll stay on top and we'll do a, a few little, like, variations of. Oh, you do variations of missionary. Or, like, me, me on top, like, turn over, flip around, up, leg up so there, like, leg there. Do leg, but both legs down, one leg up. Him in control. Two legs up. 
<laughs> yeah. The fucking but if I, if she goes on top, I'm not going to be like resting her over and flipping like unless why unless because it's comfy and it's some good. To, right I don't understand. Here, I don't understand anything. this philosophy. Like once we start, it's too so much just... energy. He doesn't want too many no, it's flavors. No, it's not a philosophy. It's just a trend that I find that once like, I'm in a groove, oh, I'm not it's just conscious it's just, thought. It just happens. I'm not like I'm not like a principle on it. We are not changing. Like, <laughs> we started. We started this way. How we're going to finish? Like, you like just that. have a certain way about you. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Friend. But if it's mushrooms, then it's like I'll go through the whole very like everything is. If it's a quickie, I'm just starting in some one position and finishing in that position. Well, there's See? not enough time for you to okay. Make so, so actually, that might be. No, the sometimes, to... sometimes I have a quickie. You can have a lot of time and still have a quickie. Hey, I do like hey, quickies. That might be the answer. Wait a minute. Why does Ian look? Have... Why does Wait. Ian look confused? How, how going to be a quickie if it's not quick? No, no. Yeah, it, no it's, it's quick in time, but it's not because I have a time constraint. It's just because I'm oh. doing it fast. Oh no, I didn't say that. Yeah, but but he, but that might be the answer. Mine, what? I like that because we have two boys, and so it's a. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so if I'm inebriated, we probably don't have the boys, and right. so then it can turn into a a wild a show. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. probably what it is. There you go. Yeah. When does the crying happen? Um, normally right towards <laughs> the end, <laughs> or, if there's, the a, or if there's a mirror, if there's a, if there's a mirror around. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're like right after I blow my load. That's where the crying happens. <laughs> overwhelmed with joy. Uh, all right, boys. Uh, okay. James, have another good week of prep. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. We'll, we'll talk to you guys soon. Yeah. Oh, wait. Wait. Well, yeah, yeah. Wait. We're no. gonna turn it off for a sec. Okay. Oh yeah, for sure. Bye, everybody. <laughs>